I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.30. It's not the meeting, actually. I'm calling the town forum to order. Um, so do we have any additions to the agenda for the town forum? I don't believe so. Public comment? Of course, it is public. Public comment. Unrelated to. Unrelated to the town I'm forum? Like now, I don't know if that could be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The forum is open. We are ready to discuss the matter at hand. General public. Please start talking. <laughs> Uh, what did they do in Hyderabad when things like this happen? Same thing you're doing right now. Okay. Perhaps we should say for the benefit of posterity that we are discussing the Kellogg Hubbard Library Appropriation, which is on Australian ballot for a vote on a special town meeting and election to be held on Tuesday, April 25th. And absentee ballots are already streaming in for this. This was to have been on the town meeting ballot last month, but uh, due to uh, clerical oversight, it was omitted from the ballot. And so we're handling it in a separate election. It seems that um, we're getting a pretty good voter turnout for this. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I think people are getting more used to uh, doing mail-in ballots and drop-off ballots, and maybe they find it easier because they can do it whenever they feel like of course, yeah. it's convenient. Yeah. That's how we run. You want to give the numbers and ballots in so far, Jim? Yeah, so 456 really? have wow. been, yes, yes, absentee ballots have been received. And just for comparison, for the regular town meeting, 440 were voted via absentee. We had 792 in total. But as far as absentee goes, we're actually ahead right now. I can tell you that when they, the day they ended up in people's mailboxes, I can always hear the blue box and people were dropping them off. And it, that afternoon, it was like people got it. They just instantly filled it out and came right So up. how long do you have to vote um, in the drop-off box? You can bring it up until the day of the election. Until five o'clock? Yeah, until five o'clock. Yeah, five o'clock at the end of the election. That's oh, on the day of, so on at April 25th. Yes. Yeah. At the last, so on regular the election day, we check that box at 5 p.m. Yes. Those ballots are then reported. Yeah. Correct. So people can bring them down during the day. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or you can vote in person. Yeah, or you can vote in person. Here. Or you can yeah. hand it in here without putting the box. Very good. <laughs> so many yeah. Thank you for, uh, you know, listing the options. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I like now, the only other yeah. question on this whole... Oh, no, we have one other question. I'll just put out one okay. is if are they more positive well, are the votes uh, in no. the affirmative? I know you don't, but the, that's the question. Okay. Are they more affirmative? I know that, sir. Are they more affirmative by having a single vote on a special day? Or would they be more affirmative if you had them at the regular meeting? Get back to me next week, I'll tell you. I know. Well, <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> thought. And I'm just trying to put something. I bet you won't have a lot. Of, <laughs> I bet you. I bet you won't have a lot of people showing up. Would be nice. Yeah. Well, we're already surprised putting them in ahead of time. We're surprised at the number of absentees. Oh, yeah, really? I know. I'm yeah. too. People are passionate about their library. I guess so. One Can way, one way either positive or negative. Right. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll find out because we told us to the affirmative. And not passionate about denying it. Is there a fail, has it? Never. No, but we've never had it as a separate item. Right. Standalone day. Right. We've yeah. had a separate item. Well, it's all over. So when people have more time to think about what they're voting, will they vote still positive? This is just Mr. Chen. Do you have a question? Oh, no, no. I was going to say, I'm just glad that we don't apply to it this year. Yeah, that we level we level yeah. this year. We're asking for the same amount that we asked for last year. Right. So. Yeah. Carolyn okay. Brennan, Kellogg Harvard Librarian. Hi, it's great. <laughs> Would you like to say something about this? Okay. Just here to answer questions just and just, yeah, just in case, and to see if anybody wanted any reminders of what we were asking for, what our numbers were like, any small pillar or anything like that. And but. Well, we obviously don't have a huge bathroom. I see that, yeah. So you guys have already given, given you all my feel. Yeah, we did hear it. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was really long. December. No, I always try to be, I always think brevity is the soul of the wit, particularly in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't get brevity at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was to hold this forum for half an hour? Like, whose idea was it to hold this forum for half an hour? No, we don't have to. We don't have to. No. No. So it's, it's, if you've noticed, if you looked at this, it says listed times. I did actually notice that. Yeah, very good. Yeah. You're very observant. Huh. We have so, no stated end time on the forum. Therefore, yeah. we can be so we go to nine o'clock theoretically. Yeah. We go one or two. Six thirty-five. Or 6.39. And we can start our regular meeting earlier. Very good. Well, right. You don't list a specific time. It gives you flexibility. Are you the chairman? Before, we didn't have the flexibility. When Bruce was doing this, it had a meeting. Um, oh, the forum was half an hour. I, I said, the meeting starts at 7. Set. But okay. <laughs> Anytime I tried to cut short the poorly attended forum, which they're never well attended. Yeah. Not in these small places. We, we actually had a couple of situations with planning commission forums that there's nobody there and yes. we have to sit here like yes. it wasn't part of the regular planning commission meeting right and we have to sit here like Did um you use it to brainstorm logs. creative <laughs> approaches to town planning i'm sorry Did you use it to brainstorm creative approaches to town planning? Yeah. yeah or there was some very minor changes in zoning or something yeah. that wasn't major when we had our right. big stuff we had that's why we had it up at ENES and it was well attended. Yeah. But there was a couple that nobody showed up and we knew that there wasn't going to be a big turnout. Well, you mean we should have small talk during the morning or not. Um, do you need a motion here so we can move this on? This has been kind of a guarantee. No one's going to tune into this. Huh. Right. And if we do, we can. I'll make a motion to close the forum. Do you need that? Yeah. We need a motion to adjourn. I, oh, that's right. We need a motion to adjourn. We hopped right over other business. We don't have other business. <laughs> I'm making a motion on number on, on uh, letter D. I, I second motion. All the favor, please say aye. 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 Stop the during the jerks. So I gather you want to start the meeting. Thank you, Carolyn. I think it's great. Thank, Thank you for really coming good. in. Thank you for having a sense of humor and boring trying certain things. You know, It suits you well having a sense of humor. Right. It's easy to do know when you know there's a lot of support coming here. We we assume so. We hope so. We hope so. Yeah. I'm interested that the uh, piece that you all said about whether or not the level of support, the percentage of support will be greater when it's a single item or, or less than when it is. Right. I am too. Yeah. Actually. So I'm going to see what the percentage yeah. is like this year as opposed to last year. Yeah. It's well, it's usually pretty, pretty, pretty low. Low. 70, 70 some odd percent. Yeah, it's pretty high. But we'll definitely show you that face. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a good night. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for attending. Of course. Have yes, a don't trip over any bodies out there. Trust <laughs> Her stress, uh, her stress level just went way down. So I think yeah. she feels much better than it. Okay, so the forum has officially ended. Now we can start the meeting. <laughs> so I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.39. I'm just, I don't think we're going to do this, but I just want to raise a question, stop the recording of the forum, and restart the um, recording for the meeting. Um, this one will just, we have one meeting ID for yeah. this for yeah. Zoom. That, that doesn't, I mean, you can stop and start the recording during the meet, same meeting. You don't have to stop the meeting as well. No. Recording stopped. From what I've seen, it'll create one video, though. All right. um, when I, when recording I have, in progress. I get one Zoom, ah. Ah. One Zoom video. It'll just, that hasn't been my experience in the past, but I haven't recorded it that way for a while. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Zoom, I didn't, I'm tweaking it. I'll make yeah. a motion that I didn't think it was that interesting. I, I, you know, I support that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we have additions to the agenda? Yes, we do. We have the WEP annual meeting voting authorization. Is that correct, Gina? Correct. Do you have any more additions that we don't know about? Yeah, I do have one. That's, 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 that's the idea. Idea. Yeah, WEC, um, what, 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 annual meeting voting authorization. Okay. It's on the select one then. Okay. But the one that Carl and I discussed before the meeting was, we want to give you a report on fire department emergency services meeting we went to on Thursday okay. night. 
Don was there. Myself was there. And so was Carl. Uh, nobody from the class, Cal Select Board was there. Um, and there was three, four members of the fire department there. Scott, we can discuss that. Then, we'll we'll discuss that. Um, review of minutes, April 3rd. Has anybody read the minutes? I do. Good to me. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. No, I mean, have, uh, we, have, we have the peanut gallery here. Yeah, I've got. Uh, well, don't we make a motion and then discuss it? We can. We can. That's we why can I was, I was making a motion to pass. No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so that's how I usually do it. Right? Usually do it. That's fine. The, the motion is going to be to accept it with with amendments. Yep. Um, yeah. So we we'll remember that. And, what we should do is have a second on, then you just call for discussion. Yes. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. With the following no amendments. Um, okay. Conversation with Washington County Sheriff. So, as usual, I'll say very good overall, and it's so so wonderful to have such detailed uh, records of our attention. Uh, Conversation with Washington Washington County Sheriff. Uh, second paragraph, second sentence with Mr. Etnayer explained. I uh, I have some language here, which if this is too long, Deidre. I can email it to you, That'd but. It says, Mr. Etnayer asked how the decision would be made to provide the town with a certain number of hours each month, explaining that patrols were covered by voluntary overtime in the town's recent contract with Vermont State Police. So just replacing this, the sentence that was there with the one I just read. Which sentence are you replacing? So it's the second sentence in the second paragraph of conversation with Washington County Sheriff. It's on page one. Oh, I'm looking at page two. Oh, right here. Right there. Got it. Yeah, the one okay. that begins. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Etnayer explained. Yeah. Do you want me to read it again? <laughs> no. Okay. I, I've heard you enough. I mean, yeah. whoops. Yeah, it sounded good. <laughs> Very good. And then on the second page, the um, second paragraph from the bottom that begins, Mr. Etnayer noted, um, I'd like it to read, Mr. Etnayer noted that he had been told that when someone receives. And third page, consideration of local emergency management plan. Second paragraph, the um, sentence, I guess it's the first sentence, it ends, so this language was to add clarity to that spending limit. I'd like to strike, add clarity to that spending limit and add to clarify that it was only the select board chair who had unlimited emergency spending authority. I think that was the explanation that mm -hmm. we received at the time. I agree. And then in the next sentence. Um, Sorry, could you uh, repeat that? Sure. So strike, add clarity to that spending limit and add clarify that it was only the select board chair who had unlimited emergency spending authority. Well, I don't anymore. Right, but this you is reflecting the discussion at the time. Yes, yes, I remember the discussion. And in the next sentence, um, that a future chair could spend town funds, um, so insert an unlimited sum of, so could spend an unlimited sum of town funds, and then just strike or infer town debt, because that doesn't really add anything. And, and then after that sentence, um, the one that ends emergency spending loophole, then add the sentence. And again, I can email this to you, but uh, it's short enough. You type fast enough, you can probably get it in. Uh, he pointed out that the select board is allowed to hold emergency meetings with no advanced public notice, comma, if necessary. And that was it. Do you have any um, edits? My my sections were just awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your name was being developed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it looks like we are ready to since we already have a motion and a second, and we're done with discussions on the call of
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The minutes are passed to make a third. Okay. Um, so the yes, next sir. thing on the agenda, oh, public comment. Public? No, you're with the old house, <laughs> the old schoolhouse. Okay, no public here, nobody up there. The next item we're gonna skip over because we're running early. I know that breaks everyone's heart. Um, so, Kobe, is someone else coming to talk? Yeah, Carolyn. Okay, so then we'll have to wait to get to that item. Yeah. And the conversation was Central Vermont Regional Planning. Are they gonna zoom in? I think he's coming in person. But he's not here. Uh, how about discussing the potential law enforcement contract of Washington County? Okay. Are we expecting anybody else to come from the Sheriff's Department or we're just no, talking about no, it? It's reviewing the contract. Okay. They presented at the okay. last meeting. Well, let's, let's take that up. Oh, they're here. Oh, that's all right. We should do our, we'll do our thing. All right. Um, I, I would suggest waiting for seven just in case somebody happens to. You think anybody's going to call in for your guys' piece? No, we're not doing that anyway. No, no, no. I know that in case. Oh, I wanted to wait till seven. We're going to do the sheriff's department thing. I know. Okay. I know. I was just asking if anybody was going to have. Oh, okay. <clears throat> just trying to come sure. here. Just courtesy. You're being accommodating. Um, I try to be. My mom told me to try to be polite. That doesn't fit you very well, but that's okay. Okay, so let's talk about the contracts. So, Kyle, you don't have anybody here to talk about with. The, we're just talking about this contract. Correct. So, yeah. yeah. Where we've gone with it and what's going on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. So we don't have any specific hours on this, see? So that's really the question to be answered tonight. It's, yes. You know, we have the contract that we presented is through June 30th um, of this year. And obviously oh. that's at the rate of 31 25. Well, the rate will be going up to 60. Double. So we have still cheap. a lot of money Gosh. that we could spend this year God, right. um, on this, but I think it's probably prudent to set whatever amount of hours we would want to carry into yeah. so fiscal 24 at that $60. So what does that have compared to for the state police contract on the hourly part of it? I forgot the amount they were getting. They were, pay were you paying them $35,000? It was around, it was around, like, it was in the $30 range. Oh, it was? Yeah. And we were contracting for 20 hours a month. Correct. Yeah. But we weren't the contracts meetings because they weren't doing. They anything. weren't doing those. Right? They weren't well, doing I'm any. Not, I'm not quibbling about our proposed shift to the Washington County Sheriff's Department. I think it was. Mm. I think it's a good idea, and because they'll actually do it. And uh, they, they seem like they had a really good plan already. In they have good. They have good plans. Right. Um, it is going to cost us more money, so. It is, but with our. Um... If you look at the budget that we have for next year, we have eighteen thousand in the fiscal twenty four budget. Yeah. So at sixty dollars per hour, if we did five hours per week, we would be within our budget because they do charge mileage. We don't know exactly what what that will be, but at five hours a week, so we'd be at fifteen six in just the hourly rate. And that would give us twenty four hundred to cover mileage, and we can always monitor what that mileage actually ends up being as bills come in. Yeah, yeah. If we need to adjust throughout the year, we of course can. Right, but. That is almost so 15, in, 6, it's hours it a year. Be, Yeah, and it's about budget at 18 pounds. Yes. So I, I, I'm not quite yeah. sure that they're going to do the 20 hours. I think they do increments of three. They, three. three. Yeah. It's going to be six hours a week. But then they said they may be able to work with us too. I mean, I they usually did three, but then they kind of well, indicated that we get to we get something know what we, yeah, that what we could do. So it could I mean, be they can balance if we yeah, have right. five. Or month. They, you when know, we do six and then. Cut or, or do three and then do additional hours the next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. No, that's why I think. Yeah. yeah, if it's eighteen or if it's twenty-one, it's it still close to twenty. It's right. still a lot more than we're getting right now. We're right. not getting. Eight. We're getting zero. <laughs> we're not paying for anything. Exactly. Right. So, well, you get well, what we you pay for it either, unless they were here. So, if, <laughs> like, that? likewise, they can't give us the hours. Yeah, but we are there's a little bet. more surety that they're actually going to do it. And yeah. The thing yeah. is that we have to place in town where people have asked us a lot for, so. We really should do it. And they're willing, but and they were willing to actually go where we asked them to go. No. And they also were willing to go in and look at their data to see where a lot of the speeding was occurring, yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, and they, so at that, that point we did that with state police. Right, but I don't know if the state police actually 
they like to sit, they like to be down here, but I don't know, know that they were traveling much on County Road. And I think these guys know the County Road pretty well. And yeah, in years past, they, they have been pretty good about going to places that we identify. Right. But right now, they're so short. Oh, they, right. They're not doing anything. Right. So it really makes sense to yeah. move to something different. Yeah. Could, if yes, we, sir. if we closed off prior conversation about maybe having whatever the closed county road day, could we allocate some of these hours for part of that um, coverage? We can ask them to do whatever you want to do. I mean, a, as an option, just to kind of monitor that. We took maybe we want to pick one day this year in the fall to close off County Road for two or three hours. As long as they want to meet the requirements, we've stipulated. Right. Them. So maybe some of that could also be. <laughs> yeah. Just as a thought. Sure. Because who's going to pay for that? If if we say we don't want to put our law enforcement hours on the county road thing, who's going to pay for the law enforcement to be there? No, nope. I don't know. That's that's my point. They won't go there. Well, last year, they, well, they won't go there unless they're paid. We we asked them to do it last year, and they did. And the police they did it as part of the contract. Yeah. The same state police. police. Yes. That's part of their contract. Yeah. Right. Right. So we actually right. paid them to be there. Exactly. Yeah. So you yeah. have to so someone to be there. That, that's what, that's my point. To yeah. the, the sergeant who's in charge of liaison with us, I believe it was the sergeant. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, yeah, we're doing this. Could you see if you can get somebody? Yeah. And uh, he tried to get it through the volunteer method, and no volunteers stepped forward. So he said, okay, I'll do it myself. Oh, okay. And we still had to pay him. Yeah. 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 So there's a cost to having law enforcement there. Yep, just like there's a cost to having them here. Well, there isn't if the state police choose to no, do that regular here. patrol. There's no cost to the town. No, anytime we ask them oh. to do something, there's a cost. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering about that whole thing on the county road, but whatever. We'll see okay. what happens. So I like yeah. the idea of doing this the short term contract. I was anticipating they'd come in with a, a year long contract and just incorporate the the uh, change in billing into it, but with the short term contract, we have a little get to know you period. Yeah. And we can ask them to come in after they've spent some time here formally on our dime and give us some feedback on what they're seeing. Um, if they want us to go to, I think they said it was a regional planning that has a tapes for checking the speeds in the roads. Uh, if we want to go to them and uh, have it put out in certain places to get some hard data, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think, I think having this contract until the end of June, the end of the fiscal year is a good idea. We're, we're already two weeks into this, so it's going to need to be less. Yeah. Or are we going to make up those hours or whatever? Okay. I mean, that is yeah. have that's the entire fiscal 23 budget essentially at our disposal for this. Um, so you can choose to do really what you want through this June 30th. If, you, if they had the availability to give us or, uh, whatever you years. want, you know, I don't know whether they would, you know, have the staff, but it's certainly an option and it would not adversely affect our fiscal 23 budget in any way. The, the only thing about finding three, four hours per week is doesn't get into the pattern that we'd like to establish. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if we just keep it the, around 20 hours a week, you know, we're yeah, not like 20 hours a month. A month. I mean, we're not dying for law enforcement anyway. We're just trying to get certain spots in town where the speeding, et cetera, taken care of and trying to keep, you know, people happier than what we've done in the past. And we're having someone out regularly so yeah. that they can, you can always right. think that somebody's going to so be maybe, there. So maybe, you know, speeding is going by the old meeting house, maybe we can do something about it because there's someone that's going to be there. Right. And so that, I think, okay. I think the 20 hours a month, more or less, is good enough to do this. I think you have your marching orders. <laughs> just, just realistically, this is the 17th. Uh, I don't remember whether he said he was doing the scheduling on a monthly basis or it was a monthly basis. Yeah, the month the, the end of the by the end of the month they had the schedule developed for the next right, month. Right. So they have to buy the month. Yeah. Okay. Good. More money to invest. Oh, the best. So oh, we're gonna make a lot of money. Energy and are there are yeah. there any decisions we need to make on this other than up or down? We just what? No, oh, no. Oh, and then the, the the number of yeah. hours really yeah. will fill this out. Yeah. And then so I'm I move to accept the Washington oh. the Sheriff Law Enforcement contract through June 30th, 2023, um, at a level of approximately 20 hours a month to be 
allocated. I guess at this point, we just want them to allocate it as they see fit. We don't have any special requests, do they? I mean, we've had the, the discussions with them, and they have that in the back of their mind. As far as where the controls would be? Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't yeah, even put that language in there. We're just accepting no. the contract. Yeah, we'll whatever. accept the contract. We can always talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so at, at a level of approximately 20 hours. I don't think it hurts Direction. No, we're going to give them direct direction. Yeah, direction. Direction. So, yeah, when I send this, I don't think it hurts. Rather, 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 rather. So you want some leeway in the contract right. and you specify it too, too succinctly. Yeah, in yeah. Your, that's what I don't have to leave. That's just ongoing conversations. Yeah. Do you want to read that back to you? There's some chaos. Yeah, we still cover each other a lot. We're really sorry. Some of us try to raise their hands. Uh, so the motion I've got to accept the contract with Washington County Sheriff's at a level of approximately 20 hours per month. Through June 30th, 2020. Don't think that was perfect. Really good job. And we need a second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, we're done with law enforcement contract. Five seven. We should talk to the conversation with Four Corners Board. Um, if we do that, though, we kind of have to be done by seven ten approximately. Give me about fifteen minutes. Do you think that's sufficient? I mean, that's what we allowed you anyway. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we could be a little bit later. It's just that um, we have people coming in for select like board candidates, so we didn't want to make it way too long. Yeah, but they can okay. take away another ten, five or ten minutes. Yeah, but we're not going to wait another hour. No. So it's fair warning, Mr. Hanson. It's just the door's open, but not that wide. Exactly. <laughs> you've, only, you've only allocated it's fifteen. Minutes. You've only allocated fifteen minutes. Boom down the other side. I think you just took one minute. <laughs> yeah. That was free. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning. Okay. Slowly. Um, <laughs> would you like to come forward or you want to be convinced? Where do you want? Um, <laughs> if you want to sit here, you'll be right on camera. Yeah, yeah I'm so on camera. Let me slide on the chair right here. Lord Paul. Out of, this is my time on here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Well, I think we sent a, a email to the select board to outline what the yeah. problem is yeah. at the four corners, so you really understand. And it's a major, major problem. I want to stress that because this is a schoolhouse that accommodates the entire community. We're all members of the schoolhouse. And uh, for the sake of the record, would you please introduce yourself? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Carolyn Shapiro, technically the town representative from the Four Corners Schoolhouse. And um, so I'm presenting this problem and then I have Toby, who's the head of the board and Andy, my partner, who's gonna be talking about some of the logistics of it. So it's major and it's something that also we're concerned about because there could be liability issues, you know, in terms of sensitivities to mold. There are people who cannot go into the schoolhouse, like Nona Estrin hasn't been able to go in forever. And there are other people who are also not able to go. And then there are those who would like to go, but we don't want them to become acclimated to the mold and maybe develop something. And so we're thinking, and it was a big discussion we had at our last meeting, whether we really need to close the, the schoolhouse until we can fix it. And the fixing really is all encompassing. It can't be one little section at a time because then you're allowing the mold to, to grow again. It needs to happen all at once with everything happening. And I think that is what got outlined is the things that we're looking at that really need to happen. So that's the main thing that I wanted to present. And our budget, of course, doesn't include that. It, it's like to cover our expenses, our maintenance, but it doesn't cover anything that's a major repair like this. And when we go for grants, often the grants will say, for instance, we're writing one now for cultural facilities through the Vermont Arts Council, a one-to-one -one match is what we need. There's no way we can do a one-to-one -one match for the amount that we need. 
So what we would really like is for the town to give us the money that will allow us to do a match to cover the expenses. And then we can also go to other places to look for grants, which we have and thought about other ways in which we can raise money. But um, with the cultural facilities grant, the emphasis is that this is a cultural space, a cultural space. And in the town plan, it talks about it being a place for events to happen. And in our mission statement for the Four Corners, it also talks about this is a place where we can have a lot of cultural events and events to happen. So it is what it is for our rural community of East Montclair. And with that, Hobie. <laughs> Thanks, Carolyn. Uh, Hobie Guy, uh, president of the Four Corners School Board. Um, yeah, this is a problem that's been creeping up on us um, when I became president way back in 2008. We took on, uh, we tried to do a kind of a step-by-step -step process of bringing the building up to more modern standards. So in 2008, we, we uh, redid the attic installation. That was all board um, board members volunteering their time. Um, we, we put down plastic in the crawl space to try and mitigate some of the moisture problems because uh, it's a dirt floor underneath there. Uh, in 2009, we also foamed the foundation walls, um, creating a barrier from the all the way from the uh, the box joists down over the plastic. Hopefully, again, trying to eliminate moisture. 2010, we added gutters and and footing drains along the front of the building where the driveway was uh, aiming a lot of water runoff down. Um, and then in 2015, we got a new furnace. Um, that was something that was more or less um, thrust upon us. We weren't necessarily working towards that end. But um, anyway, between all those things, we have cut. Um, the primary driver at that point was trying to um, improve energy efficiency. And indeed, we, we did cut the fuel usage by about 50%. Um, in the interim, well, we also tried at some point to get the walls insulated, but that was a kind of a too too uh, too high of a lift. We it was a five thousand dollar ask, and at the time, um, it felt we wouldn't be able to raise that money or incorporate it in our yearly budget. So that that was a little bit left on the side, and and so unfortunately, we've had um, although we've enjoyed the energy savings, the mold problem has been allowed to develop. Not that um, not that we were necessarily aware of that. I thought we were kind of fighting that by putting in the plastic and the foam and whatnot. But um, in 2002, I think, or no, 2020, mm -hmm. we had our first um, indication there was some mold. Uh, mm -hmm. It was primarily located in a closet. We dealt with it, you know, spot treatment. Um, that winter I went in, I drilled holes, I, I checked inside the, the cavity chamber, um, did not see moisture. Um, anyway, we, since that time, it's been, step by step that we've we've had mold reappear in the closet we've checked it again we've tried to put in some bags uh that would help um soak up some of the moisture you know bleaching spots etc but we've come to this point where um it's getting beyond us and it's now pretty systemic it's it's in the whole building um with that should i turn to you <laughs> uh, i'm andy shapiro um my work is as a energy and uh, building science consultant for buildings. Um, I do some forensics uh, in addition to design work and um, have dealt with moldy buildings. Um, they're hard to deal with. Um, mold is everywhere. And uh, once once it starts, it well, to start, the spores are everywhere. They're on everything. When you get it wet, meaning like 100% humidity right there, it starts to grow. And once it starts to grow, you, it'll stop when the conditions, when it gets dry enough. So it has to be below 40% to not grow. Um, anywhere over 60%, it grows again. You can wipe it off on the surface. It's in the materials. It's in the pores of the material. When I mean, it gets wet enough, it'll grow again. So in order to fix a problem like that, you have to first get rid of mold that's there. But at the same time, you have to change the building so that the conditions won't reappear. Um, if you do one without the other, you're wasting your money and your time. Um, so in order to reduce humidity, you have to dehumidify. Um, and in the crawl space, we would put in uh, the very smallest of a 
of a kind of commercial dehumidifier that's um, very effective and very efficient um, to keep the humidity down in that area. The mold has been found on all the sheetrock surfaces in the mechanical room and on all the wood surfaces in the uh, crawl space. So you've got floor joists that are rough cut and the, the subfloor is boards. Um, one of the things that I noticed was that the return air for the furnace goes under the stage, which has just got boards between there and the crawl space. So that when the furnace is running, it's sucking air from the crawl space into the building through the furnace system. Um, so um, we have we can change that pretty easily by moving the return up to the stage area rather than underneath the stage. Um, in order to then, so you have to first, at the same time as you get rid of the mold, you gotta do the mechanical things you need to do to keep it from forming again. So that means when you dehumidify, you're actually adding heat to the building because you're running this little electric motor that's running a compressor and uh, it's pulling out moisture, but it's making heat. So if you dehumidify the, in order to dehumidify a building in the summer in Vermont, you gotta close it up. Otherwise you're trying to dehumidify the great outdoors, which is a losing effort. Um, and so that means you have to cool the space. So now we need a heat pump. The heat pump will also have a side benefit, which it'll cost something like half as much to operate as the oil. It dries the air too. Pardon me? The air conditioner dries the air as well. Yeah. It, but it discharges it outside. It does. Yeah. It, about 25% of the um, effect of a heat pump is drying and 75% is cooling the right. air. The problem is it runs on a thermostat, not on a humidistat. So once the building is cool, it stops running. And if nobody's in there and it's not sunny, it'd be plenty cool and then the humidity would rise again. Um, you have to have both then. Yeah, yes. You need you need a dehumidifier, you need a heat pump. And now the building is now pretty well closed up. So now you need ventilation. It's a it's a it's a meeting space. There can be 25, 35 more people in there. And um, so it should be ventilated. And um, we can't just keep it closed up uh, without bringing in fresh air. So you can see that this is all of a piece. And, and then in addition, the walls, which are now uninsulated, should be insulated so that you can maintain the temperature in there and maintain the humidity better. Um, the, that's pretty much the most of it. Um, it's, it's a systemic problem in the building. Um, I think what I would recommend is that the, the equipment all be put in to do the dehumidification, the cooling and the ventilation, but not turned on. Then bring in the mold guys. They do their thing, including crawling around in that crawl space, which is, this is a wiggle space. It's not Isn't a crawl it? space. It's like this much space between the, the earth and the, and the uh, floor joists. They will actually get in and, and clean off the joists. He said, well, we can do it without doing that. And I'm going, well, why are we going to go to all this effort and leave it on the floor joists? It really should be cleaned completely. So they'll completely clean all the surfaces in the building. That'll knock it back. They get it knocked back. We turn on the ventilation, dehumidification, and cooling for the summer anyway, if it happens to be summer. And then the building should be good to go. What happens in the winter? The winter, it's dry enough. Yeah. So humidity... It's hard to maintain 40% humidity right. in, in these buildings in winter. So they're yeah. plenty dry, but the humidity, the, um, the humidifiers are on a, a humidity a yeah, humidistat. Yeah, right. So if it does happen to rise, they will um, take care of it. Scott's got a question. Right? A couple of questions. Um, going back, aside from the detail, which I think we're far away from, you're obviously a 501c3. Yes. Obviously. Um, you don't know what the cost is yet. You have no idea what the estimated no. cost because I don't think we were provided with any. I'm cost. sorry, yeah, I've been working on that. I've been getting okay. I've been giving this. And... All right, well, this helps. That answers yeah. answer the question. What What is the, um, in, in our budget? What is the town's contribution to Four Corners? Is there a contribution? Yeah, like mm -hmm. 45. Yeah, okay. Um, your <laughs> so your to this is your estimated total costs. Yes, you believe. Yep. You see, uh, the things in green are are quotes that uh, we have received. What's in yellow is stuff I've estimated up. Um, or and, and just without me, 
what does it add up to roughly? Uh, down in the bottom, you'll see in the orange, the 60,000. Oh, 60, 60, 60, I'm sorry, thank you. Five, six, five. Not colorblind. And that's without contingency. Yeah, that's without contingency. I was saying uh, we should have a contingency with what's going on with materials right now. Yeah. People writing contracts say, well, here's the labor, but I'll tell you what the materials are. Yeah, the so so there should be a contingency. What percentage? 10, 10 or 20. 10. Anyway. At least 10. At least 10. So, yeah. so if we put a rough yeah. number of 75 grand. Whatever. And you're looking for for 75 grand or you're looking for half? No. Of that? Well, we were looking, we were thinking about half of that. If we can be successful with our Ish. our grant writing, we'd be able to match that. And, and if you're not successful in your grant writing, <laughs> then we come back to you or something. <laughs> <laughs> or we start fundraising okay, so, and baking cookies. And <laughs> so, so we're obviously, you know, we have to discuss this. Before. Yes. Yeah. Number one. Number two, we're not really authorized to spend that kind of money on that. So I'm not even sure. You'd have to have a vote, right? I think you'd almost have to go to a town vote because that's such a big chunk of change. Uh, but yeah. I just got a couple of questions sure. about how this came about. Did it did it happen because we tightened up the building? Are you tightened up the building? Did you get more moisture? It got more moisture trapped in the building, and when it wasn't insulated in any way, the breeze was blowing through the building, and you would have less of the mold. Well, I mean, close. it seems like that's what has happened, but. It was closed for three years because of COVID. We weren't ready. So that happened because of that's true. For three years, we weren't. It got worse because the building. So then it didn't happen for the two hundred years it was there, or whatever, hundred years, whatever. Right. Uh, the old buildings that have no insulation, right. nothing in the studs, right. and plenty of air leakage. Exactly. So the it blows happens. through. Right. That's right. what happens a lot in these older buildings. You start closing them up. Yeah, exactly. you need to provide the ventilation. Exactly. And the humidity. In the old days, it's just put on yeah. a jacket and when you move to the building, you didn't have a mold problem. And you're as much. Yeah. And people weren't so attuned to mold problems right. either. I yeah. can't imagine they didn't happen. So I think the yeah, yeah, yeah. have this problem to the surface at this point in the building's history. Yeah. Part of it, yeah, undoubtedly, it's kind of a, yeah, it's a, I did see a lot happen in these old buildings. All of a sudden, you yeah. have a problem when you've been doing insulation, you're doing this, you're doing that, trying to make it tighter. All yeah. of a sudden, uh oh, it's so tight, then you have a problem. You, you do need to provide that's right. yeah. drilling holes back ventilation. to the wall. Yeah, yeah so right. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. We can get into the particulars, but I think the point that you just brought up, and I hate to gloss over it, but if we already passed the town budget, we already voted on it in March. Right. Um, we're having a a new vote for the for Kellogg Library because it's over the five grand. So in no, theory, that's because it got left off. They got left off, but also because it had, had to be a separate yeah. item. It couldn't be brought up. Yeah, on the floor. Right. Yeah. My my, my my statement is, if the town has to vote on anything that's outside of the approved budget, let's say over five grand or something, we would either have to have a separate vote, a special vote, or we'd have to wait until March. Well, we, we purchased a huge tract of land without a special vote in the past. I have to say that that um, that the role of the select board to make a decision on okay. what it's going to do with the money. This is allocated to you. I'm new to the select board. You're allocated a budget. Say you're allocated a budget two million dollars. Where that money goes is is up to the select board essentially. After that, I know it is. I did this for eight years. I know they have the right to do that, and if, if that's the select board's job. Is to do that, but we have to talk about this because there's, you can't short other line items in order to fund this, and that's exactly what we'd be doing. Yeah, it's yeah, two and a half cents on the tax rate. So, so we have to talk. So we can't talk about it, but you have the full. So in theory, in that, theory, we can. But yeah, you okay. can cut other line items. Thank you. Or yes. or apply our money. That's it's, one time money. Yeah. That's yeah, kind of, yeah. That's, it's a one time thing. Yeah. I that's, will that's, do this. That's the point. It should be. That's the point. Right. Well, we're just going to have to talk about it. I mean, at length. Yeah. At another meeting, because we've only allocated a certain amount of time to this. Right. We've got the material presented to us. So we have a pretty good idea what the report, report was really good too. Yeah. Yes. So, what sort of timeline are you on in terms of making well, your application, <laughs> getting getting a response, and so on? The budget for cultural facilities is due May first. Mm -hmm. The and application, application, the application for the grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with right. would that cover? That every, that's 50, a one to one. Of that's a one to one match. Would that yeah, fifty percent of everything? Only if they get it. No, no but it, how much would that 
potentially be. Well, if we ask for thirty-five thousand, we'd have thirty-five thousand for the town. So we'd be all set. That'd be a, That'd be a pretty. A that'd big be deal. Right. That'd yeah, be right. incredible. Because yes. um, sorry, if I could say one thing, I do work at the Arts Council. I think the cap on that program is thirty k. No, you might right. But I shouldn't say you might be right. Okay. Okay. But then it'd be 30. Okay, so just 30. clear you're putting in an application. Thank you for that. Yes. But you can do that. Yes. We That's go the ahead. application. Yes. That's right. Then right. when you get the money is yes. when you would need the matching funds. That's but right. what you're looking for is a pre-approval from us. Are you going to match that? But if, if would you make apply it easier for it yeah, yeah. and didn't get the matching, you just wouldn't get the money, correct? You do right. have a, you don't have to have a guarantee for us. We have not to show not when we get that thirty thousand. I understand. Contract. You can apply without our okay. Yes. 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 If, you you get, apply, if you don't get, you don't get our okay. They would like some surety or some. I understand from us that oh, we got the thirty thousand, but we don't have any matching funds. But if they applied and was and were approved, it's a lot more appealing to us that it's already approved. Mm -hmm. Potentially. Same vice versa for that. Same vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. My question is. Applying, applying for that, we don't have to have no. a guarantee. No. From this. No. Yeah. no, but I believe applying for that money in my past job, and they like having. Oh, they do. They when you do the the application process, if you say you've got thirty thousand dollars already lined up, okay, you know what? That kind of gives a little boost to that. Okay, mm -hmm. right. I think so. You right. say, well, I don't know where that money's going to come from. Maybe okay. you say, okay, okay, but but Montpelier has thirty thousand, so that's exactly what that. So there is a little more juice there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing I just want to mention too is that you talk, we're talking about putting all these electrical devices in. Yeah. Have you ever checked to see what size your entrance panel is? Yes. And, and the service I have, and uh, that's an ongoing discussion with, with the That's a big moment. discussion with, with Watch Electric too, because sometimes they don't have transformers big enough to even. Well, that, yeah, that's, yes, that could be one of those supply yeah, issues. Yeah, probably a problem as well, though. I mean, it's, they have a, probably 100 amp entrance up there. Yeah. That would handle because there's nothing else on there to speak Right. Whites. Uh, we, we have a cook range. Um, you know, yeah, it's a electric. forty amp. Yeah, I think maximum. Your battery charger? Your battery charger? Yeah. Did I think one of the same people? Just there. I guess my last comment is: this is this is you have some green and you have some yellow. <laughs> yes. And if it turns out, throwing a number, if it turns yep. out to be a buck and a quarter, it's a hard conversation to have when right. we're potentially looking at seventy-five ish. You're right. As you as you could understand. Well, and I have to say that the cultural arts was well. The Vermont Arts Council has been very generous in in telling us that we know it's really difficult to get these estimates. Mm -hmm. And so, if you yeah. give us these estimates, yeah, and then also, okay. right. yeah, especially in times like these, right? Plus the changes. So right. they're they're yeah. being. No, so it is trending down. It is to be so, to be honest. Yeah, price. Love was way down. There's a lot of stuff that's not crazy. So, so from my perspective, I, I would like, I think we would like to help. And also, I think applying for the grant is extremely important. Mm -hmm. So anything that we can do to make that better, mm -hmm. is, I think we should. So I think we need to take the temperature on this on, as a select board to give them the message. Are we going to match those funds? What so, other opportunities do you have to raise funds besides this one? Source? Well, there's always Kickstarter. <laughs> right. Yeah. We've and talked about Kickstarter. Kickstarter. We've talked, We've about, talked about, it. about, you know, going out to Front Porch Forum of the East Montana Citizens, since mm -hmm. we're all all members of the school board or the four corners, and asking for donations. And then there are different foundations that I know of that are here in East Montpelier that might be willing to Is there other grant money besides this one up this one option you're looking into it was the one Chris. historical society right. is one but it wouldn't be until september october they just have gone through their their cycle and that's a 50 50. and okay. they're almost all 50 50. yeah yeah no i've thought about that myself right my barns right i think what would really... have approved contractors it's kind of a process right yeah yeah and, the building, not that and they reimburse you it isn't like they give you any money the reimbursement yeah exactly yeah. Ah. So I think what would really be helpful is if we could, uh, on March 1st, May 1st, I'm sorry, say that we have talked to you, and if there were a letter that's saying we're considering this, we understand that this would be very beneficial to the town. And if there's a way in which we can augment the money that we're giving by having the grant yeah. match, 
that that's really appealing. I, 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 I'd rather, I mean, I think that's good, but I'd, I'd rather be a little more positive on the town contribution mm -hmm. because with our money and, we, you know, in our general amount of money that we have on hand, I, I really feel that we should do it. That's that's my... It's a good investment for the town. I, I do. So and, I, and I just think that if you can get $30,000 and we can help you get it, yeah, and right. we don't have to give you thirty. Yeah, oh, That's a no great. Right. Right. Like oh, right. And then if we have to go fund me the extra 10 or whatever, that's but, a much... Right. Yeah, that's a much mean, this is an opportunity to get $30,000 that we don't have to come up with. Yeah. You know, if you say, oh, we need 60, 70, that's a big, yeah, that's a big reach that's for us. Because yes. 30,000, not too much. Right. Yeah. And we have some great letters like Tim Jennings wrote an yeah. amazing letter. And yeah. Benedict will also write an amazing letter about how the schoolhouse gets used for cultural events. Because right. that's going to be the big one. Because uh, Michelle Bailey at the Vermont Arts Council said that they've never done anything with mold before. And so it's going to be really important to stress the cultural aspect of this. Yeah, so. the age of the building, yeah. the right historical now. significance of that building. Exactly. Those are all things that you can stress, and then make, that makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah. When I looked at the building, uh, uh, my feeling was that they shouldn't have people in there anymore until they fix it. Because yeah. one person comes in there and thinks that this is why they got sick. I know. You know. It's yeah, like, yeah. I get it. Uh, yeah. Is exactly. it still open or have it closed? It? Well, that was our discussion at the right. last meeting. We're letting, at the moment, and that may be a very short moment, but at the moment, we're telling people who want to rent it that we have a mold problem. Um, so we're trying to be upfront, transparent about it, but we have not, as of yet, shut the building down completely. Um, yeah, it's ongoing. It's, it's a tough, yeah. COVID, we lost we lost a lot of income. COVID um, to help support us. So it's, uh, yeah, we're just waiting through. Well, that's a yeah, I, I think that what we're going to do right now because we're going to move to the next side and decide. Yeah, just take the temperature of this like floor to say whether it was more or not. And I, I think that's what we should say. I think we should write a letter that says we support it, we will have to contribute the money, the man, and leave it down. Yeah, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that. I'd be okay up to 30 grand. I think that's a commitment because I'm just always nervous about it. Old buildings and unforeseen. Yeah, but this is just the match. That, that's what, yeah, match. I understand. But if, yeah. you, if it, you get the match, we give 30. Yeah. And then it costs 150. Yeah. We're going to deal with that later. <laughs> we're, not, we're not saying that we're going right. to We're going to say we're going to match $30,000 yes. right. for their fund. That Great. Always Wonderful. Of course, we support the effort, yes. but we're not buying yep. ourselves Only anything did. besides right. the 30000 right. So sometimes organizations like to see minutes to be sure that this actually happens. So for the sake of that, I will make a motion. Okay. Uh, yeah. That we commit up to thirty thousand dollars to match monies contributed to the Four Corner Schoolhouse Association by the Vermont Out Vermont Arts Council for the purpose of mold remediation. Thank okay, you. Sounds good. Second, sounds very good. You have a second. Yep. Okay. Okay. All the things we say. Uh, right. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of work. John yeah. Steen and hold the mold. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have the right language. <laughs> I've been doing it. You, you can take that with you, Carolyn. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I like doing it. You love other people. Um, and thank you a lot. Thank you a lot for coming in. And yeah. the yeah. opportunity yeah. to say that. Building. Take care. Yeah. Okay, we're running a little late. <laughs> Did everybody sign in? Uh, we do have some visitors. They probably should sign in. Um, the next item on our agenda is conversation with select board candidates. We have three candidates. Who wants to go first? We have Bruce Chapel. Nick Tosla and Zoe Cookies. We'll go first. <laughs> okay. You want to come up? We have seats. Unless it comes. Where, where do you want to sit? Sit right there. You'll be right on camera. Oh, yeah. You, you'll be on the camera that way. And I think that probably will suit you quite well. Are there any written submissions from any of you? I didn't see them. No. We just took names. Yep. Yes, sir. Do you want to be introduced? Well, 
you, I know a some, lot of people. Some people say that you should say your name. Yeah. Bruce Chapel. I live on Center Road in East Montpelier at Templeton Farm. All right. Now, you are a candidate. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll, do you want me to, what would you like me to talk about? Um, well, um, why would you like to be on Twitter? Okay. <clears throat> I guess one of the reasons that I'm interested on the select board is that our family came to this town 235 years ago, and settled the community. And over the years, family members have been involved with the uh, <clears throat> activities in the community. Um, my dad was zoning administrator. I was the chair of the um, open space and agricultural committee and i have to say that i'm pretty proud of the fact that we've conserved an awful lot of land in the community um i've i have two sons one of which uh lives on foster road and i have two granddaughters and i kind of look to the fact that uh i know a lot of people in this town i've been involved with this town for over 60 years um, when I when I was a child, this town was a farming, totally a farming community, and I've seen how it's evolved into a bedroom community today. And I've been involved with a lot of things in town. Um, my background is in uh, I worked for USDA for 35 years. Um, I helped the town out with some environmental things over the years. Um, my degree is in environmental conservation with a minor in soils and hydrology. Um, I just think that I can, I know a lot of the people in town. I know a lot about the town. I know most of the people in town government. And um, I just would like to be able to be, I think that I have a knowledge about this community that I could offer something. And uh, I look that I've had two generations, I mean, one generation before me, and I've got two generations after me that are gonna, that live in this community. And uh, I'd like to try to do things to make the community as good, if not better. Perfect. So I only have one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, I think I talked about this with you when at one point. Um, it's it's perfectly fine to miss meetings. Yep, it happens a lot. <laughs> Not too much, but you know, we do have Zoom capabilities. So yep. some days when you're running tight on time and to do it from your house is fine. Yeah. But do you think you'll be able to uh, attend most of the meetings? Yes, and you know, Seth and I go back quite a ways. <laughs> And Seth is the reason why I'm here tonight, actually, and Rose and Gina, I talked to them about it. Um, we operate a, the, the size farm that I operate, we operate, my family and I, is we raise, we have 60 cows and 3,700 maple taps. We aren't at a scale like Seth or Fairmont where we have a lot of help. So a lot of it falls to my partner, Sherry my daughter-in-law, Natalie, my son, Seth, and myself. Sometimes, especially during sugaring season, it's really hard to, if, if, we, if we're boiling on a Monday night, there's no way that I most likely could be here. During the rest of the year, <clears throat> um, yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna, all I'm gonna say to the select board is I will do my utmost best to, to be here as much as I can. Uh, it's just that, Sometimes, and anybody that runs a small business knows that that shit happens sometimes, <laughs> and you just can't. You can't. Things go bad. <laughs> we know. We things go bad, and you just can't yeah. get away. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's about. I'm. Yes, Scott. Yes, it has. Um, why didn't you run for the open position? 
to tell you the truth, Scott, you know what my biggest fear is? Is two meetings a month. I've been asked multiple times over the years to run for the select board. And I just, I worries me a little bit. One of the things we're trying to do as a family is to pass the farm on to the next generation. And we've had multiple discussions about how Sherry and I can back out a little bit. And that's, <clears throat> uh, Seth spoke to me. I talked to Gina and I talked to Rose, Rosie. And that's the only reason why I didn't, because I just am a little worried about that. I'm also on the board of directors for the Plainfield Health Center, and I'm also on the Admin and Co-op Board. Those, those organizations don't require a lot of my time. But I can see, you know, my involvement in the town when I was chair of the Agricultural Committee, it, it there's a you have to make a real commitment to it. And I, I'm willing to do that. I just, sometimes I just know that I'm not, I'll do my best. But if sometimes I, I just can't get here. I mean, you must have that happen, Seth. Well, sometimes I drive my trucker down the road and yeah. find the door. Right. Yeah, it does happen. But, you know, I like you said, I've got help sometimes, a lot of the time. Like, yeah. well, you know. You go home early that guys. Right. And you can bounce on Zoom once in a while, even when you're in Florida. You yeah, know. I do like on Zoom. Right, right. It happens. But I yeah. can't wait for instance May first. I can't be okay. Yeah. You have Wi Fi in the sugar house? What's that? Do you have Wi Fi <laughs> in the sugar house? Yeah. Okay. Oh, on, no, we on don't. On his smartphone. We don't. So, so so the other thing you know, about to answer your question is Judith, who was the member that was stepping down that we was she she only stepped down at the last minute. Yeah. We had no time to go around asking people to run. But there was announcements. It was What's that? Th there were yeah. announcements. It was it was a it was only a couple of days or two. Was it it was it wasn't well no. advertised? No. Okay. No, no. I mean the deadline for being a candidate is <laughs> Okay. And you have to get the signatures. And you have to get okay. the signatures. Nice answer. And okay. so that was you know, I didn't know what the timeline was. Or something. Mm -hmm. She said, oh I'm not gonna run. Yeah. I had asked her before you're gonna run she said I don't really know. She's thinking about there's it. She was thinking about it it's okay. You know there's just that that happens. It's just there wasn't much time to get people to run. So it's a question I don't have to ask the other candidates. Exactly. Probably. That's why I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a legitimate question. It is. Until I but have it now that I have the information. Now I have the information. So okay. that question. So questions for Bruce. Because I've already asked. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So uh, welcome. Yeah, thanks Thank for throwing you your hat in the ring. Um you mentioned chairing the agricultural board for the town. You mentioned these other organizations that you're currently serving on the board for, but could, could you just list the, the town uh, board positions or other positions for the town that you held? I was working when I worked full time for USDA. Yeah. I I just I just yeah. didn't have the time. Yeah. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. And okay. um, yeah, yeah. And um yeah, that and you know. Seth approached me and then my son about uh, applying for the position here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Seth and I, Seth is my younger son who's in partnerships with us on the farm. Mm -hmm. We talked about it and there's no way in the world he could ever do it. Mm -hmm. And I thought some more about it and said, you know, I think that's something I could do. Mm -hmm. it, it, as long as you guys have a little flexibility with me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and like I said, I've, I've been in this town. I've, you know, I've lived in town here full time for 33 years. And I've been, when my grandmother operated the farm, we used to spend summers up here. So I know a lot of the old families and town and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Sean, you have any uh, voice? I've been listening. That's <laughs> unusual. <laughs> no, he was... I didn't want to use up all. I didn't want to use up all my questions. Oh, okay. Like, so. You're just being sparing with your work. Yeah, I don't think we've met before. No, which chapel? I live up here on Quaker Road. Oh, do you really? Where, where, which house? Uh, it's just, just, just past right up here behind Wash Electric Co-op. Oh yeah, Road. McKnight Road is yeah. part of it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Hey, what happened? What was the fire thing yesterday? I don't know. I saw oh, the more fire like actions place. Yeah. Uh, there must have been five fire trucks up there. Yeah, Billy Atkins. Oh, I think. Oh. Yeah. But anyway, 
Taking all the sound in the minutes. Yeah, write that down. <laughs> so, so it's 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 on it's that. Yeah. Yeah. Just one thing. Yes, sir. Sean here was the manager in Hartford for years. Who's the what? Manager in Hartford. He was a town manager. He wants to, he's just picking on me. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, I'm just telling you. Well, it's a position that you've held. Well, we do a lot of business in Hardwick. We see. We, see. we store all of our beef and up in the Vermont Food Ventures. My Baylor twine up there. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We you still. Yeah. I have all to right. go to bed behind before midnight. And um, is, are these all relevant issues? To oh, them? yeah, they are. Uh, okay. um, so I think. Okay. Thanks. No. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Thank, thank you for coming in. Oh, that's, that's all it. it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. if you have two more. I'll volunteer myself. Okay. Yeah. Come on in. I don't mean to bob your head, Mr. Chairman, but. Well, I mean, you are the guy. We can deal with you later. Okay. It's not, a, not, a peach, it's not a peachable friend, uh, offense, I hope. Hi. I'm Zoe Christensen, and unfortunately, Bruce isn't going to be here to hear my lead off, which is a joke my dad insisted I tell. Which is that I can count more generations back than Bruce, but that's only because I'm not as old and wise as he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably been here longer, but who really cares yeah. anyway? Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd be very interested in this seat because I've lived here my basically my whole life and I grew up on my family farm that is now defunct. So I have a lot more time than Seth or Bruce and I really care about um, Vermont and East Montpelier in particular. And I'd like to begin learning about how I can best give back to the community. And um, I'd be very excited to learn everything that one could being involved in a group like this. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Because we don't have a resume or anything. Sure. I have. Um, Let's see. I have no professional involvement in any kinds of political groups or organizations, but when I was in high school, I learned how to organize and um, was quite involved in um, involving groups for different anti-war reasons. Um, I'm not sure if that's highly relevant here, but um, I went to music school in Boston, which was very, know, this is being recorded, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, naive, perhaps. And moving back to Vermont was the best thing um, I've done. I definitely am happier here than anywhere else I've lived. Um, I'm, I've gotten to compare living rurally to living in cities and I can appreciate the difference now. Um, I've traveled a lot internationally um, and actually learned a lot about traditional culture outside of the United States, which is how I came to realize that I actually grew up in a traditional culture myself um, and actually became, began to appreciate for the first time what it was that I grew up in and love what I didn't know it was that I had when I was a child. And I think that this comparison, um, this, this is actually why I want to run for this seat because I really, um, under, I grew up with a different type of community when I was younger in Vermont. And I'm really interested to see how um, it could move into the future or not. Cause it seems like it's, um, is fading away and I'm interested in how to keep the town going. And I'd like to learn about what you do. Do so you have a music background? The, yes. Well, that's okay, because I don't have a town administrative background. I was also um, a student at Northern Vermont University until recently okay. um, for student loan reasons became financially advantageous for me to drop out of the program with an opportunity to wipe my student debt. But I was studying counseling. Um, but before then I was mostly a musician.
Same, well, same question as to Bruce. Uh, are there any other town positions that you've held in the past, boards that you participated in? I don't think so. Okay. No. Any, anything analogous to this left? Anywhere else? I'd want to say yes, but I don't think that I could draw a very good analogy at this moment. Mr. Jewett? No questions? No, I got, I'm fine on this. Okay, so um, just one of the questions I want to ask, I think I asked you before, was attendance. Um, do you anticipate there'll be conflicts in your schedule? I don't think... Is this going to be, you I, know, right. is this a, a priority? Hey, it's Monday, I'm going to get there. That's kind of what I do. It's like, I'm getting there. It might be a cow and needs attention. Somebody else is going to do that. <laughs> it's definitely a priority. Um, and I live, I live four minutes away. I'm currently um, employed in a very flexible way where I can actually choose when I, what yeah. hours I work. Um, and this would be the most interesting facet of my life. So, or structural part of my life. So I don't give it that much credit. Well, I guess I know this might seem like a stretch, but like, I think, um, my father was a politician in Vermont for a long time and he brought so much of this home that um, his passion was reading tax um, data books that he found squirreled away from libraries. So at, at the risk of sounding absurd, I really did spend a lot of time at home as a, a high schooler and young person reading about tax and <laughs> cartoon illustrated books on famous political figures, including Reagan and Marx. So, I, and working in very difficult, large democratic music groups. And I think it seems like working in any group and practicing listening and um, thinking and coming to an agreement together um, can share some common denominators in terms of function. Yeah, democracy is a messy business. Yes. <laughs> but I mostly I mostly would be happy to learn because frankly, I don't know what it would be like. Yeah. Fair enough. Any more questions for Zoe? All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have another candidate. Nick. Nick Kosla, how are you all? I know Deirdre, uh, and I'll tell you guys in a minute why, and I know Gina over email. So, uh, Nick Kosla, um, I don't have quite the longevity that Bruce or Zoe have to this town. We just moved here in August. Um, the reason I know Deirdre is I was uh, recently elected to the uh, Planning Commission, um, and you know, the whole reason I joined the Planning Commission, the reason I would like to join the Select Board is, like, I, I have a I'm very future oriented and I'm very into setting our roots here and seeing what we can contribute to the community. I have six year old twins that go to school down the block. Uh, we live on Vincent Platts, so I'm starting to get to know my neighbors and understanding what this town's about and where we can take it is very important to me. Um, you know, just having the opportunity to, to listen to some of your questions uh, and give you a brief overview of my background. Uh, I've been, you know, doing consulting technology work as well as done some uh, real estate development work uh, when I was in Jersey. So very high. Oh, what's the question? Yes, sir. Where in Jersey? Uh, I grew up in uh, Bergen County, but yeah, I lived where, in Morris. Where, 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 Bergenfield. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. One town away. He must know if I'm lying. There we go. Um, so, look, very high business acumen. I manage a financial PL for the work that I do. So, understanding uh, business cases and value realization, you know, you think about managing the town budget, those are important things. I have a very deep background in that. Um, I, I play the role of a CIO for a med tech company for the, the business that I support, which means I have to understand the needs. How do you drive value? How do you justify a business case? 
how do you actually present that and prove that the investment's worth it? If you think about the legislation and the managing of the town budget, a lot of that is a parallel. Granted, it's not the same stuff, but understanding how to use your money the best way you can, you know, listening to the uh, Four Corners folk before and having here you guys as support for it, that's enlightening, right? Having the philosophy of how do I help the town? How do I grow it, right? And I, I do believe there's a there's a population decline happening, right? Because I know the enrollments are going down for school. That's a bit of a concern. How do we effectively manage that, right? It's... um. Well, this is what I have heard this is speaking to my oh, yeah, it's, school it, folks. It's a uh, big ball of wax. I mean, you, you just, just think of the PL side of it. The less people there are, the less revenue the town has. That means higher taxes. Well, just a slight correction. We're not losing a population. Or we're losing our In school age people. kids. Right. And the population is aging. Which, which was the other point that I... In, right. Well, which is not a good thing. Because then how do what, what are we going to combine with Pillar, like there's, okay. there's a lot that of ramifications. Is, is, yeah, that's a big conversation. Yeah. Right. So, so again, it's um, in, in talking to some of my neighbors, um, you know, they were talking about there's no senior housing or senior community that, that they can go to. They've lost a lot of friends in town who have left because they couldn't manage big properties. What are we doing about that? Have we done a housing study? What's what's our next path forward? So, thinking about those things is pretty important to me, right? Because I, I yeah, want to yeah. leave roots here. I want my kids to have. Yeah. A town and a property and a home that they can call their own oh, yeah. for generations, right? Yeah. So, some of the reasons that I I'd like to run. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Nick. We met when uh, when I was at kind of gathering petitions in the parking lot in Montpelier. Uh, good to see you again. Thanks for throwing your hat in the ring. I appreciate it. Um, so, same question as to the other candidates. So, you've been here a shorter time than, than they have. But uh, what involvement have you had in town activities? So, currently on the planning commission. Um, and uh, trying to get involved in other volunteering aspects of it. We've only been here since August. So. Right. Yeah. And I'll have the same question. Your time to commit to the select board, I, you're okay with that? I'm, I'm completely okay with it. I think the first week of May, I would have to take the first five minutes on my phone while I drive and yeah. like pick my kids up, but that's not it. Yeah. It's the only, that's the only. Yeah, so you're pretty it. flexible on time. 100%. Your kids are in the NES? Yep, six year old twins. Yeah. I substitute teach. I'm wondering whether I had Nikki and Julia. They're in Mrs. Garibaldi's class. Yes, I had. I had. Yes, I did. More slide conversation. <laughs> well, I said, I'm going to get up and see if he has a couple of good kids. I'm trying to get to that. It's, not, it's irrelevant. If he's got bad kids, it's still. Well, it could be a reflection of my parenting and my character. But that's all politically correct. That's all politically correct. <laughs> to be nice and You're doing a great job being nice. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I don't know about his conversation. Okay, John, what do you have? No, I, I, <laughs> I'm going to ask the same questions I asked the other two candidates. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening, though. Okay. Consistency is good. There you go. Are you telling me? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we have any more questions? We just went up the hill here, right? Yeah, yeah. Vincent Platts. Yeah, I'm All right. Coleman Parker I think Why? we're I think we're good. Okay. All right. Appreciate Thank the opportunity. Much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care. Appreciate, yeah. Thanks. Appreciate all the input we've had in this open seat. Yeah. Great candidates. Yes. Very good. What is yeah. the procedure now? Do we go to the executive session? Or do we At the end of the meeting. We uh, yeah. The procedure now is to proceed on to the next item. Um, and I think that's conversation of Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, Christian Meyer. That's you. Hey. Hi. Well, well, come on in. All right. Hey, all. Good. Good. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm good. Thanks for coming in. Well, I'm long familiar with uh, East Montpelier growing up on, on the other side of the hill in Calais, but uh, new to my current role with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd come in and introduce myself, but also kind of reintroduce the work we do, make sure that uh, East Montpelier is taking advantage of all those services that might be helpful as you're doing uh, your daily business. So again, uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, our mission is to assist member municipalities in providing effective local government and to work cooperatively with them to address regional issues. The way I interpret is that is we're kind of a tool. We're there to pull out when you need a little extra something and that you're not going to have a full-time staff to do that. So that could be 
work in the transportation field. We do a lot of work there with VTrans. Uh, we've helped East Montpelier with some intersection studies over the years. They're all pretty dated now, but um, it's a good example. Land use planning, um, town plan rewrites, zoning law updates, uh, water and natural resources, hazard mitigation, climate and energy work. Um, just looking at some of the work we've done uh, recently in the region, we've done some education and training. I think five uh, East Montpelier residents were able to participate in that, probably some from your planning commission. Um, we do grant writing. We've helped a lot of our towns get municipal planning grants over the years, but if there's something more specific, USDA rural development, something like that, we're happy to get involved in that adult capacity to the Gina or whoever, uh, whoever, whatever volunteer committee might need it. Um, we have GIS services we can we can provide um, on kind of sort of as an on-call need. Uh, recently working with East Montpelier, we helped with the North Montpelier uh, village designation uh, a little before COVID. We helped with um, some forest integrity work uh, as part of your town plan. We're getting involved now with the enhanced energy planning with your energy committee. Uh, we have uh, the Municipal Energy Resilience Program. It's going to come through the regions, so we have a lot of technical assistance to offer you as you start thinking about maybe assessments, well, there's the, the mini grants and the outreach part, but then building assessments and ultimately implementation grants. So uh, happy to be a source and uh, for technical assistance uh, as you move through that. Uh, the other big thing, kind of newer program to us is the Clean Water Service Provider, where we're looking for non-regulatory projects to help clean up the Winooski Water Basin. So it's looking at runoff. Um, sorry. No. And basically, I, I mean, I can wrap it up at that. I'd be I think interested. Haven't been funded be before non-regulatory, like you're not part of the permit program. Yeah, that's right. So this is this is uh, Vermont's in trouble with the uh, EDA for the amount of phosphorus getting yeah. into Lake Champlain. Right. Winooski yeah. is one yeah. of the big basins into Champlain. Right. So that's where it comes from. Yeah. Um, but basically, I'd love to hear about your top issues, or if there are any things you see in the coming years or year years. Do you have any opportunity? ARPA money? We don't have ARPA. They didn't give us ARPA. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out there. I, I imagine at this point, you guys have I, I figured out ARPA pretty well, but uh, well, we, we're, we're doing technical yet. distance there. Yeah. Well, well have, you, have you guys been involved in, in Gina? Maybe you know better than Kristen does in this uh, historic culvert, Ruhaha on Central Road. We have missed out on this. I think we. I don't know exactly who all was involved yeah. in that or not. Um, outside of the paperwork I inherited, I know there were a lot of different organizations involved in that. But well, the historical stock that got put on the project that came from some historical aspect. Yeah. State. Okay. Um, because we got the grant to do the culture, and okay. we were going to do it. We Probably sort of preservation. And yeah. all of a sudden, it was like, whoops, we can't do it because mm. of the driving that was done on the Lintel stone. We have a stone pole. We're just undersized for yeah. the investigation. Of we were going to replace it as such a thing, and uh, we were told you got to do that. That's uh, yeah. history. Yeah. So, so like, we're, looking, we're, we're looking at removing the streams and uh, all sorts of nonsense. Stuff. But couldn't you make an offer to them that you would preserve the stone, give it to the pavilion, and put it in the in the project? In the, right. I just didn't want to lose that. Yeah. I didn't want to be the nonsense. You know, I'll lose that. Spend it to New Jersey. Or yeah, yeah, that, 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 <laughs> very, very good, very good I, You want to ask about Relton? <laughs> I will say we you are on the list for the bridging culvert inventory service we See, provide yeah, all our municipalities. See, we'll, bring, we'll go out there and look at all your culverts, yeah. take an assessment, put it in a database. Well, you guys, you guys have, that, have you done that already? Database. No, you guys. Well, if all goes well and we have the uh, interns available, we'll do it this summer. If not, yeah. it'll be the summer after. Yeah. Uh, but you guys are coming right up, and probably, probably, probably five or six been probably five years at this point so we're hoping to get to it but it's a question of can we find the staff to walk all your roads and How you staff? How is the staffing? staffing stuff um we're hiring right now and we'll keep hiring um we're not as bad as some but uh finding interns can be hard i mean we you know you can go get a job at mcdonald's for 18 bucks an hour now and that's you know, up to 18. and it's a up lot to 18 okay oh, i didn't guess that <laughs> So we're we're hiring actively for our summer interns, which we are planning techs, which are out doing a lot of the field work we do, gathering the data we yeah. use for our municipalities. 
Uh, we get where, where the skills are available. We also employ those same individuals to in the office to do some either GIS work or working on our regional plan, which we're uh, in the depths of right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're also hire, we're gonna be hiring for a community development planner. This is gonna be a really key position working with all the municipalities on a uh, big thing right now is rural capacity, getting out there, making sure everybody's taking advantage of all, of all these uh, federal programs, IIJA, IRA. Um, and uh, we expect that coming up probably right after the fiscal year um, starts. So if we had someone who could really dig in on, on sort of a, that one-on-one -on -one level to offer all our municipalities, that would be, I think, a key position. You guys have been a great asset. Just step down from the planning commission after nine years or so. And the, the interaction oh, great. has been great. And yeah. From writing grants, and we've given you the majority of our grants, they're very competitive. and Yeah, we do. We do often try to try to get involved where we can on grants. We are looking for a commissioner from East Montpelier. Know, we, we have Clarice as a alternate. I'm, I'm on the planning commission. I'm not on the planning commission anymore. No, but what? Maya Stone is now attending the meeting yes. yeah. and is okay. potentially interested. She hasn't committed yet um, to being the town representative. And Clarice is the alternate. And right. I've been attending the right. transportation advisory right. committee meetings. Oh, yeah. yeah. Julie used to be on the I actually had a later in your agenda that yeah. no one's come forward. So we are, I'm, I'm fine being appointed to that. And okay. You all are. Yeah. Julie used to be on the executive board, Julie Potter. Yeah, no, Julie she was Potter. very out. Yeah. 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 But I mean, she was when she was on the planning oh, commission. No, she, she was, was on the executive. She contributed a lot. And you don't need to be a planning commission member to be on the regional planning commission. Right. It can just be someone who speaks to you guys regularly and keeps right. those right. chains of communication so open. So John hasn't yeah. had much to say. He might be. Maybe we should nominate him. John's already doing something else. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll advocate for the planning. <laughs> <laughs> there, take that. <laughs> He's got your back. <laughs> 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 that is a chibi idea. Yeah. <laughs> you can quote me on that. <laughs> they don't bleep that out on Orca. Uh, no, exactly. This is exactly. has to be camping down to him. You know, uh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of this going on. Yeah, okay. Any more questions? For no, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Just again, phone's always, uh, okay. yeah. I'm available. Door's always open. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, have a good evening. All right, take care. All right, so David, our uh, discussion on our annual report. Reviewed the proposed amounts to be reported by April 30th. So we have to do our annual reporting. Yeah. So what I have presented to you is what I have compiled that I would like to report as our ARPA expenditures in the reporting that is due April 30th. So most of this you have already seen. The only couple of new components, number one, I went through all of our VTAX bills and pulled out all the costs that we did incur to establish our VPN network, which is enables more effective remote um, connection for, for working remotely. Um, it didn't end up adding up as much, but it's something. So I, it's there. I went through the work to pull the invoices and, and identify the cost. So it's on here. Okay. Um, and then the other piece is we had discussed previously about identifying some salaries and wages costs. The approach that I took was the office was essentially in a state of transition from we'll call it April until August. Uh, so I, that is within, again, just point out this reporting period is from April 1st of 2022 to March 31st of 2023. So I identified all the costs associated with those positions that were transitioning, town administrator, town treasurer, zoning administrator, and I included the um, municipal assistant position in there as well. Um, so total costs of $176,720.75 for those individuals. And um, I'm including that in expenditures. So uh, I have gone over this both with BLCT's federal funding experts and our town auditor as well, um, who are all comfortable with and approve and support the position I've taken. Um, so the way this will work, um, some of these costs, broadband enhancements, um, the town office furniture have already 
kind of those those costs were already posted essentially to Barfra with the we knew that CV fiber was going to and we pretty much knew the town office furniture would be um some of these costs are currently in the general fund or we're in prior years general fund that was one of my big questions for Sullivan and Powers and that does not matter that we're crossing fiscal years on these on these amounts for these particular salary costs so the way this will transact um in our accounting records is, and I'm gonna work with Sullivan and Powers to specifically make sure I do the, the debits and credits right in the books, but um, we will essentially be posting a credit to the general fund. Um, yeah. When, as you always do in June, we will be looking at where we end yeah. um, in the general fund for the year and the select board will make some decisions based on the deficit or surplus that exists at that time. So this will be an impact on on what those numbers will be. Yeah. Um, so. And we can decide at that point to allocate the money. You can decide you what to do with your deficit or surplus right. at that time. Right. Yep. So, you have to do it by the end of the month. Correct. So I was understanding from your presentation last time that we had the option of at this point using the ARPA funds to cover just lots and lots of salaries and wages and commit the entire amount. Yes. In speaking with the auditors, with Sullivan and Powers, I was a little hesitant to do that. Okay. Um, they likewise are a little hesitant for people to, for towns to do that because if we were to have a FEMA event or something like that occur, uh -huh. um, you can run into a sticky situation if you have FEMA grant funding and things that come into play. Um, if we were to kind of use too much federal funds in one particular time period. So the uh, thought is it's a little bit better to spread it out. And that's yeah. what my gut was saying. Yeah. yeah. But until I had this specific conversation and I literally sent him a number that did essentially wipe out our entire ARPA fund. And he was like, mm, you may not want to do that if we have a flood or something yeah. were to happen. And I was like, okay, that's what Yeah, because it looks like um so I, I didn't really want to do it all right now so that's why you see this coming in more of a stage effect so, so just so i understand so the idea is if we have an emergency event that would call for fema compensation somebody at fema would look at the rate of burn of the arpa money it trips case? it trips you for single audit and for some additional kind of oh, because it's all federal money if it's if you're depending if you trip a certain amount of federal money in one year so that the okay. idea is to try to balance this out so to spread this we and the particular person that's all in powers I spoke with said, you know, you've still got time. So yes. it's better to just go ahead and spread this out a bit even to not have even though we already have this money in the bank. Yeah, but you have a number yeah, of years. But we haven't reported to the federal government that we have yeah. allocated the funds yet. We have until December of 24 to commit the funds and then we have until the December of 26 to spend the funds. Yeah. I would believe we would commit all the funds by December of 24. And there's a cutoff on that federal money that, yeah. that that triggers that whole thing. Um, and then you just do a single audit, which is, I don't know, like nine grand or 10 grand or something like that. So the concept remains unchanged of Correct. using the money to compensate for salaries and wages that we would normally do so that we would then free up a block of money with your restrictions on it is just going to be spread out over yeah, the it's, So then you have more money in general fund that you can spend on that project, right? Yeah, it's really not it's changing the, anything. I mean, the, I could, I could. Shell game. Yeah. 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 yeah, it really doesn't change our immediate plan. All we're reporting right now to the federal government doesn't affect the money that we've received is essentially what have we, your, what I need to report is what we have committed mm -hmm. and what we have spent. Um, okay. I could theoretically, as someone from BLCT told me, they're like, you can put whatever you want in that committed number. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, it's, and obviously, I'm, for the federal government, I'm yeah. probably going to report, You, I don't have to even give them this detail. I can just report one single line, provision of government services. And that's okay. really what I'm planning to do. Okay. I will be creating a PDF document that is, because I have all of these invoices. I have every, yeah. I have canceled yeah. checks. I have everything that I can possibly ever if need. If you ever get audited. If we are ever audited yeah. for this. So I will be creating a mass PDF that is not only all those invoice copies, but for the salaries and benefits, I have a very detailed spreadsheet workbook that has a summary sheet of this in addition to each line item by person. 
Um, so I'm going to create a mass PDF that is all of this $361,000, just shy of three sixty two that I'm going to be reporting to the federal government. Okay. And we will keep that in our record. I'm probably going to save it in a few places. Yeah, sure. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we will be, we will be covered and then we will continue. It doesn't prevent us though, even though we've talked about the salaries approach to this, it doesn't prevent that if we start working on the town garage, we, we can, we can call out costs just as I've done here as we move forward. So whether we use the remaining 400,000 and we have salaries show up again, or those funds get committed elsewhere, yeah, we have time to decide. Exactly. It's okay. Great. It's it's like good. It's just a hope that you're jumping through and yeah. satisfy the government. Yeah, so basically that's all. Yeah. And, and very important that. Are you looking for a motion? No, this? really, yeah. just as long as you all are yeah. okay. This is yeah. what I'll be reporting. I want you to sign the loop. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. So the next item is the financial reporting package, which we've got document or so paper yes. or not. Yeah. So really with, with this, the only things that I'm kind of calling up, we're, we're starting to come into the, to the final home stretch of the year. So starting to look at this from a, that perspective, yes. how are we trending on budgets? Um, you know, we, we all know there were components and areas that I haven't put the math to that we are down a position. So right. salaries could end up coming in a little bit closer because of that. Yeah. Um, I haven't actually done that math yet, but um, one thing that did surprise me is the listers payroll. Um, yeah. They're nearly essentially at the end of their budget. budget. Um, there's minimal uh, based on their average, I'm going to uh, guess when the next couple payrolls come in, if not the next one, that they'll start to exceed their budget. Yeah. We know we have a new lister. I think there's understandable reasons um, that there's been some extra time. I just, I, I'm not sure what we're looking at here. I did email them essentially an update of here's where you are against your budget. I just honestly don't know what protocol is here. Um, My question would be, can, can if, if, if we didn't want them to go over budget, could we just ask them not to work? Till the end of the fiscal year. Well, I think that they, I mean, I did share this with Gina a little bit. First of all, I don't think we've ever gone over the listed budget. It's I pulled well. in trying to put the 24 budget together, I pulled data back to 2016. And I can tell you at least I, I didn't go back beyond that. I looked at history to 2016 um, just to get a feel for numbers. And I know they have historically been well under their budget. I was at a select board meeting. Uh, before I was on the select board where the listers were going through a lot of conversations with each other yeah. to figure things out. And they came to the select board and said, we need another, I don't know, five or $10,000. Yeah. And uh, the select board declined to provide them yeah. with that. But that, that was the process at, at the time. Right. But uh, they saw that they were coming up towards their budget. They went to the select board and said, could, could we exceed it? Well, she, she sent them a general reminder that yeah. they're going over. Yeah. We do, we've had new listers in the past. They haven't sucked up as many hours as they appear to be doing now. Mm -hmm. So I think that they need the reins pulled in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hess. And that's who control, they're, they're, go ahead, sorry. Listen, who, who monitors? I mean, how do you know who, who audits it? Is it just who the, it? the honor system that they just come in and sign in or? Well, they, they, have the well, they, 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 they fill out timesheets. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know how this works. No, yeah, they, they, they do timesheets. Time I mean, it's monitored. It's, to... it's, it's legit. Nobody's putting no, in nobody 20 hours when they're only really working no. 10. Well, they're, but, they are putting on the timesheets that they're working the hours. They come in the office, they work the hours, they fill out the sheet. I look at the sheets. I mean, theoretically, the everyone's on an honor system. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the time sheet. It is. I mean, everyone. Except okay. that, yeah. you know, of course, with we have one hourly position that is a town employee in the office. Right. And so you're, you're, I know when that right so now you're talking person, it's, it's but I know legit. when it's coming and going. It, it, it's legit in that they're they're performing some work for the town in those hours. Whether they're efficient or not is exactly. another issue. Okay. So and one of the new the new lister is putting a lot of hours. So do we need them to or do we want to ask them to if they want to exceed their budget to come to us and make a proposal? That that's what I'm at. That's that was one of my questions for you guys because honestly, I really haven't been babysitting this that closely. You know, I knew they were, but I do. Do you have experience with anything over the budget in your eight years on the job? Well, a lot of things go 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 over budget. Um, 
a lot of things go under budget and you can sometimes balance it out at the end of the year. But when you have people working for you, that the only control we have over listening at all is their funding. Exactly. And um, we can control the amount of funding that they have. Um, and I think that we should hold them to it unless they can come here and explain to us that why they need to have all those hours. I do too. I agree. Because it's going outside the status quo or the routine. They, 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 they right. And I don't think, that, I think that's part of our job to do that. I do too. Yeah. So I, I would like to hold them accountable a little bit. We just, we're, we're just in a nice way. way. Yes. In a nice I way. I think it's, I, I'm, I'm not totally even agree. anticipating nice. I always try to be nice. Well, you try. Are you successful? <laughs> well, my biggest concern, I think, with this is now soon I'm going to be looking at fiscal 24 and, you know, how we think we're going to be on that. And if this is something that well, wait, they if, believe, if, if, it's a if, thing, if they believe that this is going to continue, that this position now requires more hours, then that's something that well, well, like, well, I'm not. just saying, then that's something that's like we need to know. One individual seems to be way over. One individual is putting on more hours. Yes, so, slightly, especially. And that's kind of busting the budget? Yes. Well, I think it's in total, but I mean, I, 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 we'd have to look at timesheets for like a Ross. I don't think we need to discuss the details. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, the, exactly. They need to hold the budget. Yeah. More come to us and make a proposal to go over it. Why either or, or we already know it's, it's going to be on the budget for next week. Right? Yeah. They, I mean, they, they've been averaging 23.74 a month and costs. I don't know. I don't know what they're, I know that there have been full days by yeah. some, so I think when we do the time sheet. It's safe to say, the, it looks like you're going to be over budget. Can you come into the next meeting and explain why? Okay. And, 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 and not bother. Stop the budget. budget. Uh, I don't know if it's fair to ask them before. I don't know if practically they can, given the things that they're doing yeah, right now. I, mean, I think, unfortunately, there, I mean, there, may be, are, there but, needs to be the breaks, but we need to apply them slowly. You can't just say, that's not really fair. But, well, I mean, that'd be fair to the town. If, if there's work that has to be done, right? Right. right. But it's exactly. fair enough to have them come in and it's say it's, it's a considered over budget. It's not going to be automatic. Are they doing a bunch? Of, you know, I don't know. Are they doing a bunch of reappraisals and they're appraising properties? Because we're going to be. They've definitely been doing a lot of sites. No, no, I know. It's just too bad. I'm just to think about it. They're just doing the usual. Would you like me to ask them to come to the next meeting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to be too hard. You guys have to take care of it. I can't do it now. Sorry. You want to wait? You want to wait an extra four weeks? I wouldn't mind because I really would like to be part of the conversation. Well, maybe we could ask them just to curtail our hours slightly and have them come. We can send them an email that says, "Hey." We already sent one. You have a, you have a budget, and as far as we know, that the budget needs to be. We can just say it's a matter of concern or whatever. You can yeah, say. I just got a response today to my email from last week saying that they would look at it, but that was that's all. Yeah, I saw that. that was, so let's. Yeah. I, I would feel more comfortable putting it off until you're here. I would too. Actually. So that would no, be my next day, meeting is May, May 14th, 15th, 15th, May 15th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But we but meanwhile we could send another email that says um, we'd like you to come in on the 15th. Yeah. But meanwhile, we're limiting your hours. We're limiting your hours. And no one will tell me. We're going to be going over budget. So that the select board has. has okay. Yeah. Do we want to put a limit on it? I was just thinking. Yeah. I would, I would say, look, we do the fact we're going over the budget. We're not sure why you're going over the budget, but we can't meet with you, you know, before the 15th. Before the 15th but we'd like you to back off on your hours for the That's next the same thing two weeks. We we're not saying a specific amount of it. Well, we don't have to say it specific. No, but you've got to give them the message. So I don't know how many hours are they working well, a week. Well, it's like it's, 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 it's all over the place. Sometimes they come in for two and a half hours. Sometimes they come for an hour and a half. Sometimes it's 0.5 hours. Yeah, it's not something I can even gauge. I know when I started, Bruce told me yeah. typically yeah. because the listers are here from 10 to 12 every day, but that has been all right. over the place. So it's, it's something that I've struggled with because it's been an issue for us trying to schedule meetings and whatnot in here because he kind of told me you can count on having the meeting room this area free in yeah. the afternoons, but that hasn't been the case. I'm going to sure you give them a message to come back on hours, and we're concerned about them. they're going to come back. I mean, they, okay. they, yeah. we, they, we need not extend the budget. We may not increase the budget. Maybe have to look right. at that for the year. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't have a blank yeah. check. Yeah. Language like that in the emails would be very helpful. I, yeah. We are considering whether to increase the budget. Seth said there's no blank check. 
Sure. I don't care what you say. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> that give you enough guidance? Yeah, I think I can figure it out. Right. Thank you, Gina. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> well, you, you, always, you always tend to be pretty nice. I am nice. I know you are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't. I know you don't like sometimes it. Sometimes I'm a little too nice, but I'm, I am nice. No, no. I, so we're just saying you to be not quite as nice. <laughs> um, we are not self speaking. Okay, and then I essentially the that. only other things I've, I've kind of pointed out here is, I mean, I'm going to be continuing to look at costs. Essentially, every place that we are kind of trending over, we knew, you know, we knew computer costs would be higher oh, yeah. with, the, with the transition of the staff. Um, there are some things we need to deal with in, in the building. Um, toilet keeps clogging. So we, we need, you know, it's it yeah. has a slow flush. Seth and I talked yeah. about this with the Christmas yeah. one because of the septic light going off. Um, so there are just some things like that that I'm going to start working through. Right. Um, so if anyone has any plumbers too, they want to recommend, just let me know. You can let me know somebody I can call. Um, but just some little things like that. This shouldn't be huge dollars, but I mean, it's just no, no, stuff that, that we kind of need to do. Need to do. That's just stuff we need to do. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but obviously I will, you know, if, if anything is of any significant cost. The plumbing is trying to get the application here. What's his name from last year? He's, he's yeah, Lloyd's. Yeah, Lloyd, I just felt yeah. Nice. yeah. They're great people. Yeah, they're a good local. And they're, and they're really trying to make a business of it. They're, they're yeah. 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 That's who take us in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Us. So, yeah. So that's it. So I'll be bringing you more. I'll kind of, you're going to be seeing a little bit more of these updates as we get into the, yes, the end of the year because yeah. right. that's it's, it it's going to, we need to. The eye, our eyes really need to be on these numbers because we will need to know you all will have some decisions to make at the end of the year with yes. where the general fund is. Yeah, we always do. So, yeah. okay. okay so, you. thank you for that. The next um, item is appointments. I believe we have some things before we can go need to go into executive session. Oh, we're not doing that. Really, we're not doing going to executive session. Oh, you want? Oh, you want to do the appointments as like Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. We yeah. have some. Other appointments outside of the select board. Yeah, that's board. what I was thinking. We so, how do you all that. want to proceed? Okay. And for those we don't have, uh, we need to call anybody. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. as many people or fewer. Yeah, we're, we're not getting an incredible amount of response right. um, to our open positions. In fact, it's interesting with the ARPA committee, and that's not on the list because that's technically for the next meeting, but I've had two people ask me questions about it, but no one has actually. Really? officially submitted in the emergency planning committee we have two people right now so not a full yeah but i at least have those two people and then they're going to continue trying to recruit but um so they're automatic appointments almost for us because we need like the funding requests uh study committee we have three open positions and we have two people that have so those are that's a no-brainer right we can point those two and then we could point to two, the rachel and Renee. Yep. Yeah. And then go and then back to hold off. Yeah. Yeah. And then the only other thing that I just wanted to mention, and Scott and I have already talked about this, but the acting zoning administrator, yeah. we all knew Gene Troya, yeah. you know, was he kind of continued on for one more year, yeah. Yeah. more of a favor. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, it would be great if we could find someone that could do that. I think someone with some familiarity with the zoning regs would be very helpful. So um, I'm gonna reach out to Zach Sullivan to see if he can float this with the planning commission. And then Scott and I have talked about some- um, Who's the guy that was the uh, chairman of the DRP for a long time? Uh, lives up here in the hill. I was Matt's there. dad, uh, Rick, Rich, Rich. So Hopkins? No. No, he lives right up here on the Rufus Plain. Right What's that? Yeah. Rufus Plain. Yeah. Oh, Rich. I can't remember his last name. We just hear from another name <laughs> that we're going to look into. Who's that? Julian. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we've been talking about this is not a position that's very active. No, it yeah, is. it's, it's, a, it's very, right. very, I mean, it, it's kind of, but I think it would be, it would be helpful because, you know, Tyson yeah. will come to me sometimes and we'll, figure something out, you know, questions on interpreting the regs. I think if there were someone that he could call, right. it would be helpful. It doesn't happen often. Um, Jeff, Jeff, what? Julie would be a good choice, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff especially, Jeff. especially if you know what the workload is, yeah, which is not much of a workload, but something not. that you might say, sure, yeah, yeah. I, the, I the, the biggest workload would be 
if the zoning administrator who lives in East Montpelier needed to do something with his property, he can't do that. <laughs> so that's, that's really where the, well, the, Julie, the bulk of the work would be. I right? Yeah, yeah I, th he, I think we'll have some good interested yeah. candidates for this. Is he and still in the area? He yeah. is, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he'd be great. I mean, yeah. he might have to find it. But there okay. isn't much time. So I may, I, I would, should we do a motion? I think you already did. Okay, to a point, uh, the slate of off the slate of people for our candidates for the funding study, uh, funding request study committee, and the emergency planning committee as listed. Yes. Yes. Sure. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And uh, Peter, will you please put the names in the mix? Yeah. Okay. Oh, the only other question, there's one other position. Maya's not ready to be appointed for the town representative yet for regional planning, but yeah. hopefully that's coming soon. Um, is if you want me to continue with the Transportation Advisory Committee, and if you want me to do that officially versus unofficially as I have been. I've had some conversations. But with if you have an alternative, I'm happy to you, not, but. Uh, I, I'll circle back to. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. It's just no one expressed interest. Right. I've been going to the meetings. Yeah. If, if no one's going to come forward, I'm happy to do right. it in an official capacity, but yeah. if someone else is interested, then that would be wonderful. Yeah. So okay, so perfect. We'll, then we we'll circle back to that. Yeah, we will hold off on that. And the deputy fee award is nothing. Nothing yet, but I think they there have been some conversations. Okay. So I think I think we'll see some movement there soon. And DRB haven't heard anything from anyone for that one. So good job, Thank you, Mr. Member. Because that's I mean it's up to the limit that is uh required three. yeah it's yeah required yeah it doesn't it's technically it's fine it's functioning, functioning right. but yeah if someone were interested i think it's good to keep these on the radar no, because I, someone you never know who may be oh i i didn't see that front porch forum post i would right. be interested in doing that so yeah 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 okay so we voted on the positions that we have people for so I think that takes care of that. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's talk about the meeting that Caroline John was to. Yes. Right. So um, the three of us attended the meeting on Thursday night with emergency services, building or fire chief, et cetera, et cetera. Um, meeting started 10 minutes late. There was seemed like a kind of a lukewarm meeting. It's Cal to showed up. No, Cal, it wasn't. Uh... Toby. No, um, uh, Greg, isn't Greg on the Calus board? No, no. Oh, I thought he was just on their board. Yeah, he's on their board. Okay. Yeah. But nobody showed up on his side. Yeah, okay. So, that was so, Greg. Toby did say that he's had individual meetings with the new select board members. Yeah, well, he's trying to bring them up to speed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, they will. Just for the record, uh, the uh, Calus select board has turned over 100%. Yeah, two people didn't run again in three designs. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so the meeting was okay. They're as far as the budget goes, they're on target. Um, they're taking a lot of money in. It looks like they'll be good on their uh, their capital uh, contributions. They contribute the money they take in on the annual service to their capital uh, plan or fund. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're on target. They did ask about the money for the new fire truck when it comes in. Uh, we had already talked about paying for the chassis when it came in. That's going to be in September. Um, that's a hundred and something thousand. We talked about uh, whether we should just give them the check for the chassis or give them the whole amount that we committed to them. Probably the full amount is probably the best way to do it. Give them one check, done, done. And then when the fire truck is built, we're going to ask Cal to do the rest of the money. And then they have a, they're going to get a loan for that 200 something thousand left. Unfortunately, the income rates have gone up, so that's going to catch the top to the bottom. Um, so everything's pretty much on track as far as the financials. The really the uh, matter of concern with the whole outfit is that um, since high has left, they've gone through uh, Larry Brown's gone. And he was the he won the election with Ty, and then now he's gone. So was it Fell? Was it Albert? Albert. Albert has taken over. Nice guy, not a real strong leader. So that's a matter of concern with Toby, who I had a side conversation with later, who was the president of the business part of it, is where's is, where's is that headed? Uh the whole thing. So 
I think that we need to um, think about a better plan in the future. First of all, the fire chief should not be elected. It's not elected in most fire departments. It's not a popularity contest. It should not be. You should have confident people. How do you, how do you change the rules? Does it have to be voted? The bylaws that we can change, or they can change, or we can change together. But they're a nonprofit, so you'd have they're to work with their, with their bylaws. Yeah, they, they, they have work with their bylaws. Do they have a separate board? Yes, they have so separate. their separate board can change their bylaws. So it's an either it's an informal process working with their separate board, or it's something that we bring up in the contract that we have. Okay. So none none of this really can happen without talking to Toby. Toby is the wise man over there. He's the president. He's been involved with it yeah. forever. Uh, a really good guy. He's getting older though, and he won't be always the steady hand on the reins. And he's trying his best. He said, "I'm never hard." So you have that lack of lack of volunteers, which is systemic along you know everywhere in the United States. States. But it's it's he says fallen off a lot since I left. Ty was very organized. A lot of people didn't like his bedside manner, but he ran a pretty tight ship. That's not happening anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Trail is not a tight manager. Nice guy, but you know. And so they have an election coming up. Who's going to be the new elected chief? So that's number one concern. Number two concern, from my point of view, is that it's going to be increasingly expensive to have that paid personnel. If what they do right now is per diem by the hour, that's okay. As they said a few years ago, we can do this, but it's a scheduling nightmare. It's hard to manage. Eventually, they will not. They will go to salary positions. Once they go to salaries, the costs go up. It's going to double pretty much the cost. Uh, yeah, puts it up a lot. So, you know, because we have a duty to tell people to kind of manage the budget here, I think we should come up with a plan. And just to, uh, to put some numbers on what you just said, uh, they said that they increased the hourly rate for their ambulance workers for the first time since the beginning. I didn't, didn't remember when they started paying or they didn't say, but it was a while back. And the EMT and uh, the rate started out as being considerably higher than the other services around here, but there's been inflation and salaries and wages have gone up, and now they they found themselves lower. But with the increase, it's uh, a plain vanilla EMT gets sixteen oh nine an hour, an AEMT gets nineteen dollars an hour, and a paramedic gets a little over twenty five. And they could get eighteen bucks an hour working at McDonald's. Oh, up to okay, so, so <laughs> let, me that, let me just put that in perspective quickly. Is that I was on the planning commission when they were proposing building this over here. Larry Brown came in and said, You know, we can get money from other towns as a contact to carry, people. and then the money that we take in, which is you get paid for the carries to the hospital, he said, That's just a no brainer. We'll be taking so much money, and we're all volunteers. So this is so much money that would be taking in. Of course, what happened was volunteerism dropped and requirements for the state for training got higher. So it, then it got hard for volunteers to commit the time to getting the upgraded training. So then they had to start having paid personnel. Now what they do, two people on paid eight to four every day and two people on from four to midnight every day. And then the position from midnight to eight in the morning is not filled. Okay, volunteers generally. Well, there's one person, I think they said, right? It, 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 only sometimes. So, when, a lot of times when we met last Thursday, then yeah. there was a woman on the uh, four to midnight shift yeah. that I talked to afterwards, yeah. and she was planning to stay there overnight. So, yeah. one person on um, yeah. both of those shifts. So, you, you do have to realize that they're beating the bushes to get people to do that. And they can't respond with just one person. So, she no. would have to wait for somebody else to right. come. Volunteers, which they hope they can get at two o'clock in the morning. Right. A lot of people wait till two o'clock in the morning. Well, I've got indigestion at five o'clock in the evening. But, well, I'm having a heart attack at two so, in the morning. <laughs> so that's what that's what happened. So, I mean, Bruce and I talked about this a lot, and it's like I think it's just we're going to have to do something different. I think this it's it's to be start thinking about different things. So, really, what I like to do, what Bruce always want to do, we want to get talents out of the equation because. 
it would cost us more money, but it's also easier to do business when it's just one town doing the work. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening with Callis is happening in Callis. We have five new members. They have no idea what's going on. We have to do business with them because we're married to them. So that's a difficult, that can be a difficult lift. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we proposed to the select board uh, a couple of years ago, hey, you know, you're paying for a third of that building. Why don't we just take it over? And 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 we will leave you up that sixty thousand dollars a year. And we'll just contract, contract with you like we do the other exactly. Yeah. So that would be a cleaner way to do business, but it would cost us a little bit more money. But the thing is, and we would be in control of the future, and we wouldn't have to be in bed with the Cal Select Board. And we're trying to do business with people who don't even understand what happened. And the Cal Select Board at the time rejected that. They did because they there. said well, we have value in the building. We're paying sixty thousand dollars a year for the next twenty years. Think of all that value. I'm like, what's you gonna what, do that going to do you? Nothing. It depreciated to zero. You're not going to sell that to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's real estate in East Palm Village. You don't really own it. It was a bad setup. Yeah, it's like a new select board that has a lot to do to come up to speed on a lot of issues. And they yes. demonstrated that uh, they don't have time to come to the East Montpelier Fire Department meeting. So they might be welcoming of well, the I, suggestion. I, I think that they would be if, if we could present it in a palatable way. Yeah. That you're going to save money and you don't have any value here, folks. Mm -hmm. And if we got Toby to buy into that concept, if we have a week meeting with Toby, we set an hour, half an hour on one of our agendas, let's talk to Toby about some different ideas. I think that would be valuable. Yes. Do you have any idea what the rough um, rough number ballpark would be on income? You say you say we would not be getting the sixty thousand dollars. Any idea what type of income that would replace? Okay, so the way I, I want to tell you how it this work. capital cost that you're talking about. Okay, so um, the way it works now is they they take about a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. They get in from the annual revenue, which is carries. It's not the money they get from the towns to serve the contract. So, for instance, when they go to Marshfield, they get the money when that person gets carried to the hospital. But they also take in say forty thousand dollars a year from Marshfield for a contract. So that goes into their general fund for like all their expenditures. The money that they get from the carries goes into their capital fund, which is what they buy their toys with. Now, I'm going to say toys because what's happened with that fund is they're big boys with toys. I know. I okay, know. so what they do is because we've got all this money sitting in the capital fund, they want to spend. let's go buy something. Let's I, build on Craigslist. No, this is what happens. I'm serious about it. I know. So I, what can happen is if you remove that, take the money that you're taking for carries and put that into general budget so that could pay the salaries, et cetera. And then when you've got to buy a fire, when you that need. goes to the town. And the town buys a fire truck, but everyone gets a vote on it. So you're not going to be spending money willy nilly for the new um, you know, tracked uh, RTV that they bought Whatever. over there for $30,000. No, you're going to say, oh, we need the $300,000. Let's make an articulate presentation to the town fathers, and that will go on the town budget. That will slow down their capital expenses. Okay. So the money that they're taking that's going right. into the candy fund now goes into the general fund. And then what you do is you get cows out of it. And then you assess each town according to the population right. on the contract because they don't have any mythology to it right now. It's like, oh, we're going to spend 50. Okay, we'll ask them for 50,000 this year just because Barrytown might charge them this and that. They have no method. So if you have a method that applies equally to every town per capita, hey, that might work. And so you serve as kind of a de facto regionalized service. Okay, thanks. So I'm, I'm just... That's just my thought. Right. It could be changed, okay. but I'm just you know. future conversation. But exactly, yeah. over okay. a beer or something, maybe. <laughs> you can now. This is a conversation that you could be um, contributing to because you had the experience in Harvard. I didn't want to blow your thunder. It's being recorded. That's fine. You can. But being recorded. You can. I don't care. It's just no, a thought. I, no, I know. It's and it's. It's similar to, to, to the town of Hardwick with their, with their police department in Greensburg. Yeah. They're, right. they're paying the operational cost, a portion, and they're also paying part of the, uh, the capital costs. Yeah. But when they when they, they, when they bailed, they didn't get part of the police building. Yes. They didn't get any of the cars. We right. had given them an old one. But, <laughs> Just you're making feel good. Yeah. But, but, but the point is that's, I mean, it's so very similar. Yeah. Uh, anyway.
But yeah. what happened was what hurt the police department hybrid is when Greensboro didn't renew the contract. Yeah. Well, obviously, I mean, it's two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars disappeared. Yeah. It's yeah. background of all this stuff. No, that, no, it just has it's relevance. It's similar. Yeah. It's, it has thing. a lot of relevance because people, towns can bail. The only difference it's here small. is that is that Hardwick, the police department was a department within the town. These guys aren't. Yes. You're dealing with a nonprofit. Yeah. Well, what that can happen. You could turn them into a department. Exactly. The they they, uh, they could be working for the town. And another option we talked about yeah. years ago was. You know, maybe Barry Town has this franchise over the region. They have a right. of scale. Maybe they use a facility there. They they run the ambulance service. And the then we have the fire. And and then yeah, then our town just stays with the fire department. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think they can manage like, that with volunteers. Huh? And and Barry Town has asked us about that. Yeah. And then we just say let it go. It's getting too expensive for us. Well, but the thing is, and what's the thing about that, and I won't say more after this, is the residents need small player support the emergency services because it's so close. So if you have an emergency like John Jewett has a heart attack in his house, oh, you're God, pretty yeah. happy because the ambulance is right down here. Well, now, well, if you did it as an arm, where the Barrytown kept an end, yeah, know, kept that would be part, part of the deal. That'd anyway. be part of the deal. Right. Have so safer. then, so then maybe you could cut your overhead, right. and still have a service, right? Right. Yeah, that I think that's a, a workable plan. I do too. We just would have to do a lot of negotiating with the fire department and make sure that we're not going to take away something they really want. And I'm not sure they really want the EMS part of it. Right, it's a pain, yes. Not only, but not only that, the first thing you have to do is get, get the talents out of the, out of the ownership <laughs> of the building, which they shouldn't fall for because it's no advantage to them. So it's, what's the next step with this? Is to get Toby and talk to him. But do, do we want to have a select board conversation with him? Do you want to continue your conversation with him? I think a select board conversation would be appropriate. Okay. So and it, we can, you know, we can ask Toby where But it should be, I would think it would have to be an executive session because it's almost like a contract. It is. So it it is. And yeah. the executive session would be appropriate. You know, right. right. Well, the, yeah, because it would put us at a disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So we already have a report. Yeah. So, so, Phoenix so for the May 15th meeting, yeah, yeah, schedule yeah, Toby. We need time to. No, no, we can have some business at the May 1st. Yeah. Do you, so do you they, want to have Toby for the May 1st meeting? No, I'll be here. Okay. That's what I but we can ask him would he feel comfortable coming in and talking in the executive session about some of the matters that we have concern about. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'll reach I'll reach yeah. out to him tomorrow to see yeah. if he can be yeah. here for, for May 15th. Yeah, perfect. It's, Early notices we can anyway. Get. That was a uh, long I'm sorry about that. It's just that it's a uh, big thing, yeah. It's yeah. Really cool. So, yeah. first, more of the update on the, the truck, as you said, Seth. Um, around September, the chassis is expected to arrive at the place where they're constructing the finished tire truck. Uh, Toyin, they have jigs right now where they can be building the truck before the chassis itself arrives so that, um. Hopefully they can put it together very quickly once it gets in, but we're still looking at November at the earliest, maybe 2024, the actual truck will be delivered here. I don't have any more questions. I'm just assuming. I, okay. is that a correct assessment? So yes. um, I think that closes it out bad of business. But we haven't talked about WAC yet. That was on the business office. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you as much. Okay. Why? Really? Is it too late for the WAC? Oh, you're running? Yeah. Yes. Oh, good. You got my phone. <laughs> there are four candidates, and we need to vote for up to three. There are three incumbents and a newcomer. Oh. Astonishing. So Don Douglas, Gene Hamilton, Mary Just Skinner, and Carl Etnire are the four candidates. So the select board. So typically what you've done in the past with this is you've identified the candidates you would like to vote for. You authorize the town administrator to complete the ballot and send the ballot in on behalf of the town. Yeah. So the floor is yours to determine your three candidates. I have a question or 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 doesn't have or it doesn't have to be three yeah. or one so or two or none. Besides somebody sitting on the select board in this room, are any of those other three candidates residents of East Park Hill? Does anybody know? 
Uh, Mary Jeff Skinner is in Middlesex. I don't know the other two. Jane lives in Plainfield and Marshfield. Mary Just Skinner? Mary Just Skinner in Middlesex. Okay, so none of them are East Montpelier residents. I don't think so. But I'm not positive. No, I'm pretty sure you don't know. Okay. Yeah, because the president is. Yes. So do we have any strong candidates? Yeah, yeah. Just Skinner's been there a long time. Right, yes. She's like up in years. So but she's been there for a while. So Hamilton and Douglas are, are new also are new candidates? Are they oh, been other than incumbents? No. So um Jean Hamilton is an incumbent. Um remember she's, she's been on for one or two terms, I believe, in the past. Oh here she says she's been a member of the board since twenty seventeen. Mm -hmm. And Don Douglas, um, he's been a board member since 1999. Holy cow, I missed that. Yeah. And Mary Jo Skinner, somebody said, has been on for a long time. Oh, as well. I think she has. Well, I was reading about it. Yeah. She's been on the board for 11 years, she said. Yeah. So, what do we do? Me. They're all good candidates, probably. <laughs> well, I think we should. I think we should promote. We should promote the local person. Yeah, that's fine. The new local person with new ideas is good. I would endorse it. I would too. And I have somebody from East Montpelier too. All good. I don't uh, know about the others. Good. You picked the other two. <laughs> I think last time we, we voted for two. We did vote for two. Yeah. We voted for. I don't mind voting. Do. Yeah, and we don't know the others. I mean. Why don't we just vote for one then? I was going to say, I mean, it, nothing that says you don't, you could vote for one. Hold so we could vote for the East Montpelier. Well, the bullet vote. Did you know that? I mean, it's it, pretty it, term, but it means actually three votes for that one. Individual. That's right. Taking away from the other two. Well, let's do it. Sure. Sounds good to me. Go for Carl. Do we need to do a motion? Suck where to decide okay. on one candidate. <laughs> right, deciding on genius. Yeah, kind of make that motion. I'll make that motion. No second. You're back, oh, you're second? Okay. Yeah. And that person that we're recommending is a local candidate, maybe yeah. Carl Etnire. We have to it's gotta be you gotta name the candidate. Sure. Yeah. Yep, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you for your comments. Perfect. And power of the clues. Okay. Yeah. okay. Wow, we're some worth rolling now. We're going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next item um, is discussion on town management light of COVID-19. I think uh, Mr. Ednair has got a, a long... <laughs> not so long in consultation with you. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to can read pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as Gina, thank you for continuing to update us on the local numbers in the uh, memo to us. Uh, last time we talked about uh, ceasing to take up this issue each time in the meeting, and I prepared some language that, um, with uh, with your consent, I'll email to. Deirdre to put in the minutes, and then we can just decide if uh, if that's what you'd like to um, not have this as a recurring agenda item. But what I've put together here is COVID-19 remains a serious ongoing cause of illness, death, and disability in the U.S. and the world. The latest figures from the Centers for Disease Control show a seven-day average of 1,870 daily hospital admissions in the U.S. for covid and a seven-day average of about 190 daily deaths in the U.S. So even though COVID deaths are down compared to most phases of the pandemic, COVID-19 at its current level is still approximately 50% deadlier than traffic fatalities were over the course of 2022, and 2022 had an unusually high number of traffic fatalities. Furthermore, long COVID remains poorly understood, and estimates of the rate of long-term disabilities from the disease vary widely. 
So basically setting it up saying, this is still serious stuff. And then it continues, Not, nonetheless, the trend is away from any sustained government response. While the select board will examine any COVID related issues that come to its attention, we will no longer automatically include the issue in meet, each meeting's agenda. That's Sounds great to me. Is that okay for you guys? It today. sounds like a thesis to me, but that's okay. Here, here, here. <laughs> okay. The best part about it is we're not going to include it in every agenda. Yeah. I thought you'd like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know that we need a motion on that. I don't believe we do. Come to a consensus on how right. we put together the agendas yeah. in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you. Oh, my God. That cost us $3,500 for those ballots. Okay. Oh no, and then there's ballot printing over here. It costs us five thousand dollars. Oh my goodness. Some of that was for the original. Ah. Oh that's good. some of the original. Oh, okay. Not the addition to. Oh good. Um you want those, John, since you're right here? Sure. You don't have to go so far off the field. Of the warrants. Did you want to do the uh, report? Yes, yeah, so uh, I've already, I think, set the ballot update, but um, we've received 456 absentee ballots for the special election um, that will be held on April 25th. Um, town clerk Rosie will be out of the office uh, the first week in May. She will return to the office on Monday, May 8th. Denise will work. Uh, the front desk for Monday through Wednesday of that week. Uh, we are still working on kind of specifics on, you know, there will be things that we won't be able to do without the town clerk here. So um, we're going to get something communicated out on front porch forum, postings in the office, but, and then for the two days that Denise will not be here, that's getting close to tax payment time. So I want to make sure that we are here to take those. So Michelle and I will, will, I already got a bell. Someone can ring a bell. Michelle and I can run out front and take things like tax payment. Um, that'll be about all we'll be able to do without. And even when Denise is here, I mean, we will be limited. You know, things with dog licenses have changed, for example. It's a new system. Denise hasn't been trained on it. She's not going to be able to do things like that in Rosie's absence. So um, we're working on kind of how all this will look um, and we'll communicate out as best as we can. So let people know what's going on. Sounds like a plan. And you'll obviously have to post it on the page of the website. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll post this to the website. We'll post it to Front Porch Forum. We'll have to find it all over the place here. So, you know, do our best to let people know. Uh, there have been two permit applications since last meeting. Um, I think one was a addition to a home, and then one was for an actual construction of a new home. Oh, nice. And then we have the meeting schedule, which I think we all reviewed in detail at the last meeting, but they're here. Yeah. That's it. I have one other thing to add since we were talking briefly about the closing of County Road proposal. Uh, I got a message from Jack Zalinga of the Rec Board that they discussed it again at their most recent meeting and are still um, interested in further conversations about it so that uh, some of the members of the Rec Board and I are going to get together this week sometime to answer their questions. Okay. Don't have any questions on the town administrator report. Some of the business. The only thing left is uh, going executive session. Mm -hmm. So we could. I move to enter executive session to discuss the personnel matter. We have a second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, I would say we are out of executive session and we've come to a decision. No action was taken in executive No action was taken no in executive action session. Taken in executive right. session. <laughs> and um, I, I move to appoint Zoe Christensen to the remainder of the open select board term ending on town meeting day 2024. Well, wait a minute. It's the open seat. It's the beginning of the three-year term. She is, that's the three-year term. Yeah. 
She's getting appointed for the first year of a three years. Yes. Yes. Well, for the right. Year, three but years. It, it only it only goes for a year. The yeah. appointment. The appointment lasts for the second. Right. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, um, I make a motion and we adjourn this meeting of the select board on April 17th. Not only this was at the 906. 906 on overtime. Oh, you're on overtime? <laughs> That's how you like <laughs> I will second that. Overtime farmers don't know what that is. All in favor, please tell. All right. All right.